make sure that actually it says live. You know what's interesting? It also said 13. It started the timer at 12 or 13 seconds. Oh, that's tricky. Yeah. That gets you in trouble. Yeah. I was saying wild shit. So it says excellent connection. I guess Imagine. we're live. Oh, my nose. Why, hello, everybody. Howdy. What's up? Oh, the cookie hair in the nose. Did you pet the cat and rub your face? No, not yet. Oh. It's the eyes I can't okay. touch. Oh, okay. The face, we're good. The nose, a little itchy. Guys, we're back and we're live. And Hello, we're, good day, guys, good evening. I can't even see the time, but I just know we're on it. Mm. Um, Ish. So I think said 905 wins. Is it 905? Yeah. yeah. Well, listen. On ish. We're going to be hanging out tonight. We're going to be bullshitting. We're yeah. Be, we're supposed to be doing something. We're going to be drinking Penelope Architects. It's mostly going to be that. And then on top of that, we have um, these sample bottles here full of other Penelope Architect things. There's four of them. And we're going to be blending or picking or doing something with Mike and Danny from Penelope. Yeah. And then this will, Sean's mic is way louder than Dan's. Really? <sighs> They're really close to one another. Why? I don't know, man. I'm even close. I'm on mine. You just, uh, hey, David, while you're here, thanks that for fits. being a member. Appreciate you being here. Welcome to the fucking fam, buddy. Thank you, man. Um, okay, so we have done Penelope picks in the past. We have. We have a non-toasted four a toasted and a toasted four grain. Mm -hmm. uh, and man, freaking fantastic. Toasted is like among. Mm. I love I love toasted whiskey so much. Yeah, so. Danny fixed it for us. Danny saved it. Yep. Actually, that's they, what yeah. some people would say. Some people would use the word "saved." Yeah, by the bell. Um, but yeah. So, if you guys have questions, we did ask patrons earlier. Did you pull Sean pulled it up I here? Tried for the most part. Hey. Um, and if you guys had questions, we have looks like twenty nine comments. So we'll go through those questions with well, both okay. commented so twenty eight. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. Um. Yeah, we definitely because both is about us screwing up his advent last year. Okay, <laughs> so definitely less twenty eight. Um, but yeah, so needless to say, we're gonna go through that at some point. But yeah, needless to say, Mike and Danny from Penelope. I hope they're ready. Weirdly, Mike's naked in the back, but I'm still gonna put him in here. <laughs> <laughs> Only waist down. Surprise. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Uh oh, oh no. oh no, oh no! Can you hear uh -oh. us? Mike is muted. Mike is muted. Unmuted. I'm there muted. we go. There fucking go. nailed it. <laughs> he's just fucking with just us. Yeah, he's sure like, you guys were all watching. <laughs> he's like, uh, he's like, I was screaming at people in the background, so I did yeah. mute my mic for a short you period. Know, of time. You know how many times that happens though? Mike comes into like a thing and and he's all <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> There's no fucking sound. I hundred yeah. percent. Okay, just based on my conversations with Mike, I hundred percent believe that happens <laughs> more often than it doesn't happen. You know what I mean? Some of my favorite openings to phone calls ever are, are phone calls with Mike at like nine o'clock at night. Those are some of my favorite <laughs> phone calls of all time. Yeah, those are good ones, man. I like those. Gotta, you know, you gotta keep it interesting, I guess. That's the idea. You gotta, man. Otherwise, it's boring. How you guys been? How's everything going? Good. Good, good, good. Crazy, busy, busy, yeah. Interesting, seemingly productive, you know, shit like that. Mm. <laughs> Love it. Kind of. <laughs> right now a liquid iv in there or, or what dude listen oh, yeah. so if you it's like the it's like a life hack all you just dump the liquid iv and then you stir it with the packet and it it's like the well as I long as the packet in theory wasn't like on the ground or something but flip water <laughs> everywhere um but yeah i don't have a straw so that's my only option at the moment or just put a lid on i don't have a lid either okay so <laughs> So Mike just said you were doing a little uh, blending or tasting or something along like that. Working. Oh yeah. The new barrel strength. I told I, I I actually had something personal. I totally Danny. I totally missed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you did. So Danny's I'm gonna like, screw the barrel. Barrel. I know you weren't there. <laughs> I wasn't there. I missed it. I uh, missed you. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to circle back on that one. So, <laughs> how did it go? <laughs> uh, it went good. I think we I think we got a good one. Yeah, we were working on uh, batch it's 13 fantastic. slash 14. You want to skip the number batch I want to skip 13. I want to skip, skip it. I just skip it. I hate Wait, the oh, is it. A, it's a, is it a numbers issue? Yeah. Oh, it's like the elevator thing. I was born right. on 13. So yeah, why don't we just... That's oh. a good point. Why don't we just my not? Son, oh, my God. son was born on the 13th. So I, what? Yeah. Well, that's wild. I remember my wife's in labor and I'm like, you need to hold this out for like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's like noon. He's like at 12 hours. Best tech in She goes, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> 
She's like, get an arm's length. I, I dare you. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm about to hold you for the rest of your life. And it's very short. <laughs> but as long as you hold your breath. Yeah. Mm. Danny, um, you can't skip 13 if the, you got Cooper and Sean's birthday on the 13th. Yeah. You can't. You're right. So You're right. I think you just got to suck it up and deal with the demons internally. Sean's birthday is the 13th. We can't skip it. Yeah, see, I appreciate it. See, if you think about it, in theory, you should it, make batch 13 like a special batch. Like bad? And then you just blame me? You're you know like, what? Well, that's Sean's fault. Yeah, what if... Okay, hear me out. What, Danny, what if you, like, blend 13? It's, you're like, mm. this is easily the best batch I've ever blended. It's like this special occasion whiskey. Blah, blah, blah. It's incredible. Goes to bottling line, jalapeno vodka in front, <laughs> right? We're just back to batch one. Like, it's a huge fucking disaster. We could just we could just release that as batch yeah. thirteen. Do you guys have that sitting around? Just somewhere? make the worst. Just make the worst batch yeah. we've ever made. We definitely have like <laughs> a, a, a like a tier, like a, like maybe what like fifty cases of it somewhere. Fifty? Oh my! Like fifty. We couldn't Dude, sell half of it, dumber, man. That is so depressing. I I remember remember he's, he's, yeah. he's way back in the toad. Uh, he laid out. It wasn't even like it wasn't even like a, a spice, like a like it didn't taste like fireball. It like tasted like jalapenos. Yeah, see that well, that's worse than fireball. Yeah, you know I mean, it's yeah. way worse. I just feel like that's gonna be a mild version of it was like uh, a our mix, friends. It Weeper. was like a mix of Bud Light lime with Tostitos lime. That is so interesting. Actually, I think I'm more intrigued. After Dan's those like, I would those. love that. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to try we'll it. Up, we'll dig up a sample of it. A lot of the bottles, I, I was so pissed, I just took a sharpie and wrote jalapeno on the front of it, like aggressively. The bottles, Super aggressively. aggressively. <laughs> with a knife, <laughs> jalapeno. <laughs> and then they, they, some of them, some of them, I'd write jalapeno, and then I put a line under it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, here's the thing: we haven't gone through any of like the things you guys have gone through in that sense and mm. i can't imagine if that happened to us at this point what the fuck we would do just be crippled be devastating <laughs> like holy yeah. shit can you and remember that i even looked at danny after that i go dude i think we're way in over our heads <laughs> 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 yeah. oh no oh, here's yeah, the thing though fine. look like i mean you guys are killing it now you know what it i mean just so, you stronger it's a damn good thing you kept going though you know we had another batch after that that was, you know, it just, you know, there was like something on one bottle filler. There, you know, there were eight bottle fillers. One of them just wasn't clean, right? So one out of every eight bottles was like this juniper taste. That's terrifying. Yeah. You know, yeah. Dude, I remember that, Danny. I smelt it and I go, I go, whoa. What the fuck is this? I go, Danny, that's gin. <laughs> <laughs> but then I grabbed the next bottle. The next bottle tasted fine. So we we're like, we stopped the line. I remember the next morning we showed up at like 7 a.m. and laid out every case on the floor in numerical order and went through every case and and like popped the corks, tasted. Oh man, it was we were ripped by like and that's why they're sold in 700 mils Dude, on that, that one. Is, Just <laughs> holy shit, man. But we we might remember we tasted through like maybe two hundred cases. I had to roll up our sleeves, do the dirty work. <laughs> well, listen, somebody had to do yeah. it. <laughs> we'll like just at that on the floor and be like, pass me another one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At that point, the whiskey, you know, it's like we didn't have a lot of money. We still don't, but like that's everything. Like you right, can't yeah. you can't lose a batch. Like you're out of business. <laughs> There's no I, way. That's why the first one terrifies me so much. Oh yeah. So you guys Sorry, know. I don't get scary, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna need. Okay, were you guys? Do you guys bottle at your own facility right now, or do you bottle outside of your facility? You know what? Both. Both. Okay. Were you bottling at your facility at that point, or outside of your facility? Outside. Okay, we have to buy a bottling line and just do it on the streets, dude. I don't know. Like, so, so we can <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, we, we can be mad at ourselves. Oh, That's reasonable. Oh, I didn't even have the lights on. I, just, I was like looking. I was like, why is our set so fucking Oh, that makes dark? sense. <laughs> um, oh, but nice. the thing is... <laughs> Oh, we could definitely fuck up a bottling line. We could. I mean, just But if we do, we it. only have ourselves to blame. We're going to be very angry with somebody else if it's not our fault. But it feels better when it's someone else's fault, right? I guess we can just blame somebody. You're like, you're like, um, this tastes like jalapeno, sir. <laughs> <laughs> like not a good way either. Hey, yeah. asshole. Dude, put it this way. That stuff was so potent. Not kidding. 
Danny, Danny walks in there on day one. By the time he left on day one, it was like the night evening of day one. Danny had like a rash from whatever was in the air. <laughs> you know, one of those huge ones, like from like an auto parts store for semis or huge tractors. Are you guys cooking down jalapenos in the back? We actually <laughs> are. Yes. So potent. So crazy. Really. <laughs> crazy. And then crazy times. <laughs> and then they had a. We so we went to them and we said, uh, you know, excuse me, sir, ma'am, we think something's wrong. Yeah. And they're like, well, we had a tasting panel taste through these sample bottles and. Everything che- everything checked out. I go, what the fuck planet are you guys on? <laughs> <laughs> are you employing these people to say that? Yeah, well, okay. You, you said the word panel, and what yeah. you meant was fucking bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Just open the door. I'll get three people off the street and see what they say. Holy shit. But that's that's it, man. We lost pretty much the first day of our first ever bottling run. Oh, I'm going to be honest. If, if you don't quit then... I don't know when you would quit. You know what I'm saying? Because that seems like a real basically worst case. Yeah, that yeah. seems like a real mo- like pivotal moment in the in the whole like career path of the whole thing. Yeah, and I feel like that'd be a good time to be like, you know what? Fuck this shit. Call the brokers. Sell the fucking whiskey or out. You yeah, know we I mean? tried. Yeah. Um, real quick, at it. We'll catch up on a couple super chats. Drums and drams. His name is Cam. He's a dickhead. Reigning champion. Uh, he did beat me in uh, Matt Manus. So uh, he's barely better at blinding stuff than I am. Cheers, guys. Going to revisit my Penelope Architect Build 1. Still have a soft spot for Rosé finished batch 2, though. Cheers. Nice. Cheers, buddy. Thanks, bud. Yeah, thanks, Kim. Zach Jones. Oh, God. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, Mike even knows it's fucking... Mike literally knows Zach because he's, he's such Zach. a chaos troll that everybody knows him. Mike could take the jalapeno batch and blend it with his spit. I'd pay 300 a bottle. Hashtag Team Mike, Team Sean. Dan keeps taking my wrench. Oh, well, that is true. You do. Okay, well, he definitely awesome. deserved the last It's so funny. Nice super chat, guys. And then, Jeb Singleton. Cam's been listening to Creed on repeat and upset. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, okay, so um, one of the things we talked about doing tonight, other than just hanging out, shooting the shit, that's all we're doing. absorbing, you know, your guys' time and livelihoods and which we appreciate. Yeah. Um, was um, like playing with some of these uh, architect samples that you sent. So I don't know anything about them. I've seen that you guys have done architect blends or picks or whatever the correct terminology is with some, like, I think Sealbox did one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, God, and so, yeah, they Another are a handful. Yeah. Oh, maybe, uh, five or six so far, maybe just, just, a, just a handful so far. Just a handful of them. So um, if you guys want to explain how this, so the the last, for those wondering, like a real quick thing is on the last one, we blended them. You guys sent us samples. We blended with those samples. We had like blended something that we didn't know if we wanted to like finalize. And then we ended up toasting that. You guys toasted that for us um, in two different barrels. And then one of those barrels got super funky and sideways. One of them was really good. Danny uh, is like one of the greatest blenders ever on planet Earth, and then saved Wish that for it. us. Yep. yep. And then um, the other thing that we put out was just a four grain that I think was like a really was that high wheat something yeah, like that. Yeah, we went a high, high wheat, wheat blend on our four high grain. wheat. Yeah, and so, they said, "Wow, no one's done that." They're like, "Wow, you guys suck at this, huh?" Yeah, That's they're crazy. like, "Oh, I, we hated that, that blend." Danny, we'll bottle Danny, it for you. Danny was like, "No matter what happens, the thirteen can't be worse than their blend." <laughs> So if you guys want to explain how these, like the, I guess actually if you want to explain just for people who don't know, the Architect series initially first, like a brief overview on that. And then we can get into like how this program works for you guys. Danny, you want to give the skinny on it? Give the give the update on Architect. Architect came off of Toasted basically. Um, so Toasted, you know, we did the Toasted with you. It was exactly like, exactly what happened to your barrel, right? You We put the same blend in two barrels. And one of the barrels just went fucking haywire. So that happened a lot. Um, and you could you could always blend out of it, but there was a lot of inconsistency. And we uh, were talking with uh, Redu or Speyside, and they mentioned these staves. Actually, Mike was talking to the guy one night, and they were just kind of like blue sky thinking kind blue of stuff. Blue sky thinking. Blue we sky thinking. Little, guys, we were having a little thought Dream. shower. Thought shower. Dream. Right, <laughs> Dream. At like midnight. And then Mike calls me at 2 a.m. and is like, I just talked to Rob. He's got these staves and uh, 
you know, so that he ordered them, they show up and we just start playing with them. And these staves actually I have them. <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> casually. <laughs> uh, so like we just started playing with them in, in like beakers and seeing what they did to the whiskey. And what we found was that they were so freaking consistent. Like you could use uh, multiple staves and they come out with the same profile. So we wanted to come out with this product that, you know, you can like literally build your profile, your flavor profile. And it's consistent on like a barrel that just kind of goes down a conveyor belt and gets shot with a blast of fire. And you don't know if it's consistently burned, right? These staves are consistently sure. toasted. Uh, even the wood is chemically profiled when they, when they, make them the stave or where they select the lumber for it. So, you know, you're getting the same tannin levels and a bunch of that other stuff that science scientist stuff that I'm not sure of, but you get <laughs> consistent profiles. And that was the main thing of it. And, um, the whole product evolved at like 2am again, just kind of like a conversation, like, you know, Mike tasted the sample from our trials and was like, man, this is, this is really good. Like we, yeah, we have I remember it. that I was walking out the door. I had my backpack on. I go, no, let's get this. Cause I really, I really <laughs> make it happen. Let's do that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm on the phone. I'm like, hold on one second. Yeah. Danny ship it. <laughs> no, but like that's, but that's the key. Like it resonated with him on that, on that level. And you know, we just went with it and uh, created the label and kind of, you know, I used to be an engineer, so we named it Architect. <laughs> no, yeah, I have yeah, no yeah, idea yeah, why yeah. we named it Architect. No, I, <laughs> Wait, were you really an engineer, though? I was. What kind, <laughs> a real of, one, what kind of engineer? Uh, mechanical. Damn. A real one. I'm going to find. So here's the thing. I was an IT engineer back in my previous life. And. <laughs> I'm gonna find another IT engineer so I can. No relate. one, no because one's gonna claim that. I need that. like a fake. I need not a real. <laughs> I keep meeting like civil, mechanical, you know, chemical. Like I meet smart engineers like you. I need like an engineer like me. Uh, Zach said it, and so he must be talking about the jalapeno, the jalapeno uh, whiskey. Said sounds like it should be on the wheel for the person who loses poor guesses. Mm. We got it. We got. I need to get you guys a bottle of this stuff. I'll yeah. send. I'll send it out to it's. It's probably more wild. mild than Brandon's Reaper whiskey. Not to take it too far off track, but our. Somebody who calls himself our dear friend in person made us this whiskey, and it's like a hundred percent malted Canadian whiskey mixed with Jim Beam White Label, yep. and then he grows like Reapers and Ghost Peppers and Brown Blue, whatever the uh, something it was a bootla of some yeah. sort. He grows those. He put it in the whiskey for like twenty minutes, and then took it out. Dude, it's it's hate. It's sin. I don't know. It's just it's it's bad. Yeah. It's so hot. It's Anyways, stuff. sorry, Danny. No. <laughs> that's essentially it so we've been playing with different state profiles i mean mm -hmm. the state profiles are basically the level of toast on them and we've been using different blends mash bill combinations and just kind of just honestly just having fun and playing around with it and that's what we sent you guys so we we sent a couple different mash bills different couple uh i think we sent two different stave types mm -hmm. and uh you know i think you, you sent just you can see the variation between them. I so mean, th these are these three are the same. So people aren't going to be able to make this out perfectly. Oh, look at the. Oh, I mean, uh, they can. Yeah. The color difference on these two is the craziest thing on planet. Like mm -hmm. this is like amber, rich mahogany, and this looks like whiskey. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that one's wow. like dang near red. Yeah. So, um, I personally, I this. Because I like like the, I like toasted stuff like that, like second barrel finishing and stuff like toast. that. I love it because it gets like punchier with the flavors, and I kind of like like the more like punchy up front. That's that's gonna be from, you. from the yeah. if I had to guess. Yeah. Um, but I'm a huge fan of these. Um, Sean's is Sean's favorite one has been two so far, and three has been my favorite so far. And I liked. I think it's like Sean likes two because it's the least kind of in your face. I think. Seemingly. It's good. It's nice, toasty. It's uh like not super freaking woody. And Dan wants to chew on two by four. I want <laughs> I want a wood dominatrix for my mouth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. Um so the other cool thing that you guys did is put on the back of this, because they're different, as you put mm -hmm. like the different profiles. What are these things called? The chart names. 
those are the oak profiles. So that's the taste profile by the, the states that we're using. So we'll give the uh, the engineer in France at Radu who makes these. This guy, he loves it. I go, I want to put this on the label. Sure. Um, we send them exactly the stave combination with the like with the volume of liquid that we're going to be blending with. And then he just puts it into the, his computer and it pumps out what the profile is going to be. That's so cool. Interesting. Yeah, it's this, cool. This was a really cool idea for the back because it does give you like a way to pick up the bottle. And be, if you've had like, especially if you've had a previous one, yeah, you can look at the, that and be like, okay, no, that's leaning towards like the thing that I liked about the previous one or whatever. Yeah. So, so Redu, cool? Redu is all about this um, because they developed these staves for the wine industry. Mm hmm. And the fact that it's now being used for whiskey is like, mm -hmm. it's mind blowing to them, you know? Yeah. 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 And we're like, just keep sending them. <laughs> but like, so they, they actually listen to us when we, we did a batch with one stave combination and, and we, we gave feedback. We said, you know, it was a little too uh, like tangy and, and too much tannin and they adjusted one of their staves based on our feedback. So really, like, it was, it was really cool to work with such a hmm. large company and be able to get or give that feedback and have it heard. That's interesting. So when you do, after I ask this, if you want to catch up on them. Yeah, I was going to say, well, this one is pretty, like, uh, relative to what we're talking about right now. Um, Tom Burns asked, is Architect blended, then aged in totes with staves, or are the staves in barrels and then all blended? So all the builds, like build, uh, we're up to build three right now. Uh, build one, two, and three are blended, tanked, and then staved. Okay. All right. So that way you can control the entire outcome, basically, rather than expecting the barrel to change the whiskey while you're staving it. And Right. Because so we'll come up with the our three mash bill blend, and then we'll put the staves in it. So we know what the control is. The control is mm -hmm. the blend, and then you stave it. Um, mm -hmm the we have architect private barrels which are some of the ones that you have which where we stave the actual barrels and that gets oh. tricky yeah so these are more of a unique expression of architect then yeah mm -hmm. so we're oh, getting like a, a okay. wider very you want to say what the i already opened those barrels i was just going to pour them in order number order don't do that why don't do that <laughs> i'm gonna pour them in number order i don't like that this is the lowest number mm -hmm. this is the highest number Okay. I can't screw this up now. You would think that. Um, so we have. So I think. So you said uh, build two. You liked it because it wasn't as oaky. It I mean, wasn't, and then I look at the 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 wheels on the back, and it actually says two is more, more toasted, toasted than three. Two is more Not toasted, which which is going to give you more of the sweetness in vanilla, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Not necessarily. That's like why the, I like it. The oak, mm -hmm. yeah. We yeah, two two is crushable. I mean, I could that, that's a pounder. I feel like we've been kind of oaking more and more batch over batch because we're just like we're like like batch one build one. We were just kind of dipping our toe in the water with mm -hmm. French oak, and then two we were like, yeah, let's push it. That was more, more of a batch one's more of a proof of concept type thing, right? And then yeah. you were like, oh, this will work, and then let's see how crazy we get with it. Right. Because that's the one this is that looks this black. This is literally motor oil. <laughs> <laughs> I just poured it in my glass and realized oh, that is the darkest whiskey I've is. ever fucking you seen. Know, it actually might be motor oil, <laughs> and I'll, you know, and it probably tastes pretty damn good. I you mean, know, that's wild. Yeah, that is dark. That is one that? Uh, is like labeled intense. Intense uh, staves. Yeah, you know, every time we do these, I never get the samples. You know, it would be nice to get them. <laughs> Actually, I, I should have I I grabbed them oh, in the office. Mike, the good news is I'm so good at explaining what things taste like that you're just going to know exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> It'd be like you're drinking it yourself. Yeah, it'll be just like that. You're going to feel it. Um, okay, they can say the barrel know. number. You probably have tasted it anyway. <laughs> we got 777, 2092, 2209, and 2210. Hold on, let's see here. Yeah. There was Tommy said a thinger. Sibon Rose Batch 02 gonna hit a BS Penelope nice. store pick. What's oh, nice. BS? It's awesome, man. Right. Thank you. Right. Store. He said, Love this stuff. Thanks again, Mike, for saving my life at Whiskey Weekend Batch <laughs> 4. Oh, hi, Dan and Sean. Cheers. 
Uh, Mike, you caught that when he was Tommy falling? as he was falling. Oh, Tommy was the giant guy with the white beard. Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah. I Drunk Santa Claus. Oh, Santa Claus. <laughs> he looks like Santa. Oh, shit. Yeah, you caught him as he was falling over at Whiskey Weekend. Um, Dude, I, rem- I actually remember that. I forgot about that. It's hard to forget. He's just such Catching a small a giant. guy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, dude, that was a great weekend, by that the way. That was a fun weekend. That was fun. That was fun. I wish that... We want to come up to Michigan next August, man. If you got, Are you going to do your thing again next August? Yeah, it'll probably... We're looking at the last weekend in July right now. Yeah, so it'd be yeah, like two weeks, weeks sooner. Yeah. Because so. we had talked about it. We we were going to go, and then, and then I think, like, I don't know, everyone's busy. You guys are everyone's yeah. busy. And then, well, like, four days before, you're like, hey, are you coming this weekend? <laughs> yeah, well, I remember... Oh, that's this weekend. What I remember <laughs> saying was... You and I were talking about it one we were on the phone talking about it and you're like, dude, as long as it's not my wife's birthday, like we're definitely there. And I'm like, cool. Yeah, right. So that means at that point in time, I know that we didn't have the date set because otherwise we would have known in theory yeah. if it was your wife's birthday. And then I think like in the next six months, once there was a text message that was like, Hey man, this is probably the date or something like that. And then like a week and a half before I was like, Hey, you guys coming out? And you're like, What? <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, like, oh, dude, my signals, my signal's broken up. Can you reset? Yeah, that? yeah. I'm going through a tunnel, man. I don't <laughs> at least for about a week. Uh... <laughs> yeah. You're like, I, I I'd rather awesome. die. I heard and you're like, shit. Show. I heard yeah. it was awesome, guys. Seriously, that's awesome. No, so um, yeah, hopefully the last weekend in July is what we're looking at right now. So um, but we're trying to get the weekend set in stone, yeah. like a long ways out, so that we can give everybody like the dates yeah and then everybody if they want to come yeah they can throw it on their schedule and whatnot so Mm -hmm. um okay so question for you guys so i see there's a couple different things so on the the stave type this one says complex and the other one say intense and then i've got a delicate um so do you guys know what like that profile means just wrote what that means in type deal i mean basically like delicat is essentially like a medium toast and then okay. intense, intense is like a medium plus and then complex is uh a heavy okay in terms of like barrel toasting so you know like on the scale delicat intense and then complex okay so it just goes up which oh, funny dude. is like that one's supposed to be the, the oh. medium one yeah. and it is the one that's black um real quick. show them the staves again it's one thing we've been finding out what's crazy is these staves suck up so much liquid in these totes and in these barrels it's crazy yeah like our forecast on what we thought we'd yield on a run is like as i mean they're these things are like they soak up a ton of stuff so are, the, are those um spent staves or used staves or are those new ones these are new ones they're just okay. like they're like crystals and like i just want to <laughs> snozzberries taste like snozzberries i just want to lick them. <laughs> oh my goodness so those are all being um toasted where at where where are they they doing the the toasted staves for you in france okay so then they're shipping okay yeah i didn't know if they had somewhere stateside that they were doing it and then you guys were taking them or if they were coming all the way over they usually go to uh they usually go to california then come to us. They they'll st- they store them in a facility in California for the wine because okay. it's a big wine thing. So they fly them over you all the way to <laughs> California and then bring them back. That makes sense. I mean, don't worry about it. Okay, listen, dude. That, Mark, that really dark one is. Mark Evanacker said, "Don't put the licked wood in the vat." Now here's the <laughs> yeah, <thing>. or do. <laughs> yeah, Zach Jones says he paid three hundred bucks for it. Dude, I'm gonna be honest. It's probably freaking great. Yeah, you know I mean. <laughs> Okay, so in theory, are we treating these like barrel picks? Is that how we're going to do this? Like, if we like one of these four, we pick one of these four. You can mix and match, too. Yeah. Oh, that's dangerous. Wait. Dude. Okay, hold on. Before we really piss Danny off, yep. is it way too much work if we put these together? No. No. <laughs> For me, that's no. You'll fix it. <laughs> no, I know. When Mike said, you can mix and match, too, I looked at Danny's face. He goes, yeah. And I was like, oh, no. Yeah, man, totally do <laughs> Whatever that. Whatever you want. Yeah. Whatever like, yeah, you just, want. <laughs> sky's the limit, man. Open canvas. Danny, Danny goes, listen, your last barrel, you guys did a fucking terrible uh-huh. job. And I can't pull your asses out of the fire again. He's just going to be like, yeah, man, mix whatever you want. You're getting one barrel. <laughs> I swear to God, and I wish no, it was we- just like it wasn't going to work out. 
I wish that we could have let everybody who got the Penelope picks that we did last time. Oh, try. I wish we could have let them try both of those barrels separately. Like we, Sean and I had them and then try the finished product, like all said and done because like legitimately people in like the drink whiskey would consider that to be magic. Yeah. Like we do that. The blend turned out. Yeah. Yeah. I forget the barrel number. The one barrel was awful. (laughs) wild but the first the other barrel was fantastic yeah it was, great. And was like i remember him handing me he goes all right these are barrel samples you should try them I'm like okay and i tried one i was like oh that's direction. great yeah because we tasted them in our office like, and we're like oh, one. oh shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I, I remember trying it and just being like send them what let's is let's that what, finish let's see what they think <laughs> i literally mike and i were on the phone and he's like hey man what you know what do you think you know about the thing and the barrels and i go Dude, I know one of them's so fucking good, and the other one is so fucking just either bad or weird or off or we done messed it up. And Mike's like, "All right," he goes, "What do you think?" Just thought, you what if we give Danny like a little time to kind of like fuck with him? And I go, "Hey, man, I you know at this point in time, I'm Does like, that mean he might fix them." Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if anything can be done except hoping that this like ages out of wherever the fuck it's at. Yeah. And then like five days later we have samples and it was like, Holy shit, dude, these are good. So look that, uh, that, uh, Steve is already, uh, it's sold. sold. Yeah. It's sold. That's up on secondary. <laughs> One WD said 500 bucks. <clears throat> and that, yeah. and I think I told you like that the, what the thing that happened in that second barrels was it got moved. It got moved mm. across the warehouse. And like this, whatever this, um, moving around, like just fucked everything up. <laughs> that's right. We got to get that, the guys out to New Jersey. Yeah. We do need to come yeah. out and hang that, out. That, and- that's what uh, Thrasher said. He said, it's great that Penelope office is five minutes down the road for me, but I only, the only times I get to see Mike and Danny are whiskey week and bash four <laughs> and on a junkie stream. Dan, I thought you and Sean were coming to New Jersey for a pick. Cheers. We've talked about so many times and like eventually we just need to do it. Yeah. We've talked about it, it feels like a thousand fucking times. And then it was like, okay, what other flight or travel is already booked? And then we're yeah. like, fucking damn it. Oh, uh, so. the year. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is actually a really good question. Oh shit. Oh, not this one. You guys have we would love to. I, I it's funny in New Jersey, we're not allowed to have a tasting room. What? No tasting yeah. room, yeah. Not even for educational purposes. What the hell? You can have a tasting room if you're if you fall under the craft distillery, but the craft distillery is smaller, and uh, once you're above a certain threshold, it's they consider it plenary in New Jersey, so it's purely manufacturing. You can't. There's no. There's no tours. There's no tasting room. There's no gift shop. Nothing. What? Yeah. Okay. So when are you guys moving to Kentucky then? I guess. Like, what's the- <laughs> That's insane. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Like if, if, a, you know, if it, it's been like that for many, many years. High West is out there just doing a tasting room in like the worst liquor laws known yeah, to man Mormon in Bill. Utah. Yeah. And yeah. you guys are like, can we do a tasting room? They're like, absolutely yeah, not. Absolutely. Yeah. They're like, no, no. Man, that's why I can't believe that. Uh, that sounds, that's what it's almost like when you hear shit like that, you're like immediately. It's like, oh, you just don't want businesses oh, like this to happiness. succeed. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, because the foot traffic and like all that kind of stuff is Everything. great. And it's like, no, 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 you can't have any of that. Like, try to survive well, without it. But well, it is no, New Jersey. They, they, you might not be getting the joke. The joke is you're actually following the law. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. They're like, oh, like, okay. <laughs> Oh, well, goodness. no, they said, no, they said we could fix it easily. They just said we have to like call our senator and have him change the law. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's actually You're like, hey, how much money you want to spend? <laughs> okay. This, that is the conversation when we talk about like barrel picks, we'll do a barrel pick. It'll go up on Patreon. People are like, you guys don't ship to Tennessee or North Carolina or Virginia. And we're like, no, oh, well, can, that's not us. Yeah. And it's not bourbon out like bourbon officers can't ship there because those mm-hmm. states don't allow alcohol shipments in. You know what I mean? Like Virginia wrote in was like, stop now. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. No, I've never seen that. Yeah. We want to get, we got to, we got to, I mean, if we're not going to like call our local Senator and be like, Hey, do you mind like fixing mm. this? <laughs> but I think, yeah, you gotta, you, you, we can keep New Jersey, but you set up, you got to set up shop elsewhere. It's a little bit more easy going on the distillery regulation. I sure. Guess. That would definitely be the idea. Are are all of these okay? So you guys bottle all of the architects at 104, right? All of the uh like yeah. the batch builds we do. And mm-hmm. then are these cast strength or are these 104? 
The ones you have are cast dry. Okay. So they're going to be in. They're going to be in that like one ten to one thirteen range. Okay. I lo- that's such a well. Good I would be losing four guesses. Oh no, um, you thought it was hotter. Oh well, uh, Taylor, Which did you have your B yet? Oh no, I've only had A. Okay, I've smelled all of them. Dude, okay, so Hello. the twenty two oh nine. The only thing I've smelled that. that's even close to that is that Ambarana wood that we put oh. that stuff in. It's so like it's cinnamon toast crunch. It's like the milk after cinnamon toast crunch. It's thick. It's th- so in cinnamon. This is this is we're gonna run into a problem here. You love it, don't you? I love the nose <laughs> on this know. really dark. Oh no, twenty two. It's, it's a lot. What'd you say? Is that the motor oil one? Yes, I yeah. love the nose. I haven't drank it yet, but I love the nose on it because it is like <laughs> fuck you, good luck. You know what I mean? It's like one of those drinks, and it's all like it's all wood on the nose, right? Yeah, it is. It's like spiced toast, like. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it is. It is. I'm, You're gonna fucking love it too. It tastes oh, like I want it. To oh taste. yeah, you know wait. Okay, wait until you, and then I can read you my tasting note on that one. It's uh, it's very professional. Probably should be on a magazine somewhere for that. Your one. tasting note. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, That's like the one thing I hate doing. I hate doing tasting notes. I hate writing the back label, and I hate doing tasting notes. Well, mine sorry. are pretty much made up. They're just for me. No <laughs> one else is going to read them and be like, oh, that's a real tasting I note. I agree with you. Oh, wait, you're going to read some of these ones. <laughs> if you, so, if you look a lot of our tasting notes, like on the one-pagers for our wholesalers and stuff, a lot of them say, like, sweet candied cream or sweet, sweet that's candy. That's great. Yeah. Like a lot of um, them. We were just out last week. We were out in Colorado. And – um. We're at Old Elk and we're sitting there. And while we're at Old Elk, Greg Metz is hanging out like there with us on our pick. And so we start Casually. bothering him. Yeah. He's just, he's like there to hang out with us. And so we start bothering him and asking him questions. And what you, the normal shit you do when Greg Metz is around, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's Greg fucking Metz. What I are we going to do? my wife. I was like, Greg Metz is here. And she's like, that's nice, honey. And I was like, you don't know who that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're like, <laughs> hanging out with Greg, asking him all these questions. And he's like, oh, he's like, I'm in Greg. I mean, he's a legend, right? Like in yeah, everybody's yeah, yeah. mind that knows who Greg yeah. is, that loves MG, like he's a legend. We're like, he's like, oh, I'm terrible at tasting notes. He's <laughs> like, if I do like a good job, I might get like four or five out of a, of, out of the whiskey. <laughs> and it was like, this is Greg fucking Matt. He's, he's like, goes, I can discuss yeah. something and tell you when it's wrong though. Yeah. And, okay. and make it incredible. Um, but That's then awesome. he was so funny because he was like, uh, he's like, you know, and he was being, he's like the most polite guy on planet earth, right? Like he's literally like the most down to earth, nice guy. Yeah. And he's like, That's awesome. sometimes I just, he said something along the lines of sometimes I just think like some of the tasting notes are made up and Sean and I are sitting there. We're like, yeah, I mean, we're, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, we've said some dumb shit. You know what I mean? Like without a doubt, we said stupid shit, but That's whatever. It's really funny. It's also like we, we kind of like the farther we got in the discussion, it was one of those things where it was like, we all just end up calling whatever it is to us. We call it that, right? And mm-hmm. then, like Sean calls some things this one thing, and I know what he's talking about. I don't get the same thing, but I know what he's referencing flavor-wise, right? And then later, he was talking about like a panel that they use, like their panel for tasting and stuff. And he was like that. It basically it was the same with their panel. That after like three or four years or however many years it had been, he's like, I know when you know panel member one says that tastes like this. He goes, I know I don't doesn't taste like that to me, but I know what they mean when they say that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I think that's so much more important than the tasting note itself. Yeah. Is like, I get what you reference. When you say it, that tastes like, yeah. you know, popcorn, I know what you mean, right? Like, mm-hmm. but not everybody, unfortunately, it takes like, you know, four years of us doing Give this to take, know what yeah. the hell each other are talking about. <laughs> so it's like somebody watches the channel is like, no, they're fucking stupid. I get that. <laughs> Come to find out. <laughs> okay. That's a good point, though. I mean, if you know what they're referencing and shit like that, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, that you kind of know if they like it or if it's going in a good direction, you know? Yeah. Oh, oh, dude. That's exactly what I wanted that to taste like. You ready for that tasting note on that one? Exactly what I wanted. Give me the one more. What's the tasting note on it? Oh, I wrote thick ass toasted wood. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like am I not right? That I wouldn't go as far as to say Amarana barrel. No, I know you're talking about, but it is that cinnamon heavy fucking toast, though. In the it's all wood sugar, mm-hmm. like it's like the fucking greatest, dude. Ah, uh, dude, I didn't even taste uh, D or whatever yet. Okay, real quick, 
uh, because I do want to give Klein a shout out because he's in chat right now. Hey. Klein's a buddy. <laughs> he said, to be fair, <laughs> you are stupid. Correct. To be fair, he's right. Yeah. Danny, how many stains did you put in that thing? <laughs> the perfect amount. About 17. <laughs> oh. 50? <laughs> Danny, Danny's like, so here's the thing, Mike. I'll never we can't tell. actually put out batch four, build four, because we've used all of the stakes. <laughs> in We're one out of stakes because we shoved them all into one barrel. Wow, that, yeah. Which barrel was that? That was 20, uh, 20, 2201, I think. 2209. Yep, 09. 2209, sorry. So, well, that's what's fun about putting these staves in, um, <clears throat> in just straight barrels is that you don't know how much liquid's in the barrel, so it's just a fucking crapshoot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it, could, like that one could have been a short barrel, and you got these staves just sitting in this the small amount of liquid and just really like pulverizing it. That's kind of the fun part about doing it with the barrels, though. You know, yeah, that, like so that's what we do. That's what we do, and like for our bigger builds, we're, we're more precise about it. But again, we then we we brought it back to the in Roselle. We just you know, we pop them in the barrels and we see what happens. And then we blend out of it. That's so we did a batch in Roselle too. And Danny, what'd you use? I, you almost had like the fishing line to hang the staves. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, these, right I gotta. We need to figure out how to get the juice back out of the stave. Because yeah, like, like, like you ring it, ring it. Big yeah, hydraulic they just, press. <laughs> they just suck up all this juice. It's killing me. You gotta ring it. Figure out a way to ring it. It's so dark. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm. This is. This is. Have like, you even gone through all of them yet? Yeah. Okay. And uh, probably my two favorites are probably your two least favorites. These two. You like Those these are my two. favorites. I blended by the, the first two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. I knew this was happening. This. Hey, this happens on toasted shit. Every time we smell do that shit, things. though. This is one and two. Yeah, one and two. Roughly equalish. That is kind of a splash here, splash there that type really good, actually. That smells amazing. I know. Okay. So I'm going to add exactly, I'm going to duplicate this exact amount by pouring it from this glass. Yeah, I'm sure. You don't even know which glass is which anymore. <laughs> yes, I do. Because <laughs> this one's darker. That's the only reason. All right. Good luck. Godspeed. That's way too much. Oh, way that too was much. literally perfect. Holy shit. If you guys have ever seen science, that was it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, the Penelope 4 grain barrel strength is amazing. Can't believe it's not a super hunter bottle. Thank I... You. Love I'm it. so into um, what you guys just changed or updated or whatever word's correct, but you guys just updated the toasted barrel label mm -hmm. and that looked freaking awesome. It looks mm -hmm. incredible. That was long overdue. I mean, the problem is we, when we did the toasted, it came up out of the blue. I mean, we were, we just opened the facility just like architect. We got in four toasted barrels and I think we had oh, like fantastic. our, our facility was just open and we had like a customer come in and we're like, oh, you got to try this. Like we're kind of like, you know, like we like kind of like this is new for us. So it was fun and exciting. And the guy, uh, I remember the remember thing, I think it was uh, the Royal, Royal Liquors. Yep. He he, uh, he tried it. He's like, this is really good. I'll take the barrel. And Danny's like, no, it's like R&D. I go, sold. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that shit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, guess. Oh, we'll no, take no, it. No. I'm like Mike. Oh, technically, we need to leave this in the barrel for four months. We, did. we left it in there for <laughs> a little while, but I, you know that was kind of cool. So then we started like siphoning through them, and, uh, and and we didn't have a label. And I go, well, the black label, our private select. Remember the the original what was a, a black and gold. Mm -hmm. I just said, well, that's kind of like our barrel program. So why don't you just make it the same label but use copper? And it was kind of quick. And then as it's been out on retail, I kind of noticed that it does take away from private select. They look almost identical. So it's sure. kind of hard to like, we had, we knew we had to do a change. It was just a matter of when. No, the you new one that? looks great. I haven't tried it yet. It's oh. fantastic. Adam said, I'm outside of Philly on the main line. You can set up a tasting room here. New Liberty Distillery has one. Nice. That's not, I mean, that's shit. Philly's an hour and a half. Not even. That's right around and the corner. Eric Yucca. Been holding the bottle toast in Texas select batch 36 fresh crack delicious cheers boys. I, cheers, buddy. Cheers, man. That's I awesome. remember that batch. Yeah. <laughs> Very clearly. So what's what's funny too is we opened up with the facility, you know, our it's a small place and we we it was slow and steady, right? I mean, we're still slow and steady, but we don't have big tanks. So we were bottling all of our toasted at our facility, with the exception of the 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 latest ones, like the with the new label that the new batches are now we're doing them at Bardstown Bourbon Company. But 
um, our our tanks were only 500 gallons. So okay. you're, that's why you have so many batches because you're kind of just siphoning through them pretty quickly. Sure. I think we're on, like, I don't know how many we've run off of probably a hundred batches of toasted. Holy mm -hmm. shit. It's a lot. And how, wait, <laughs> wait, and how long? Not a lot of years. It was like five minutes. Right. <laughs> yeah. But that's the best thing. Like much. when you get up to like the 10,000 gallon tanks, you can do it and you only have to do two of them a year, maybe one of them sure. a year. Yeah. So it's, it's part of the fun of the part of having the facility is the micro batches. Cause you're using like five barrels, six barrels. Sure. Um, you know, we're not even filling up a tank. We're like, Oh, this one's for Louisiana. Cool. Sure. Let's find six barrels and get them into these, you know, char three Kelvin, you know, toasted barrels. It's kind of fun. Will there be another release of the Tokaji finish? I yeah. What is that? The Tokai, Tokai. We <clears> just <throat> we we're taking these barrels on a second turn. Um, probably, Danny. You think like what? Maybe if you're lucky, January. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it, it, it'll be like Q1. Anything but that third one. Oh, dude. Anything <laughs> but that third one. Which is the third one? What's the barrel on the third one? That's the 2209. That's that that's, really, really that's dark the best. one. Okay, as a single barrel, that's the best single barrel. If we're doing these as single barrels, I've been, I blended three and four together, and I'm and I'm I'm trying to smooth it out with the first one for you, because the second one 2092 was my least favorite. I like 777 though. It's just mm -hmm. not. Here's the thing. If I'm like 777 for me is more like um almost like less far less finishy. Duh finished whatever you know what i'm saying woody whatever wish it, wish it didn't <laughs> the problem is i like 777 but i don't like the what the reason i like our architects is because it's kind of like do it you know what i mean yeah. do it too yeah so, so i have a blend of these three going on right now okay. but i honestly think if you were to blend them it'd be those two together. i i think that you're right because i do think that this is balancing mm -hmm. this out a little bit Unfortunately, front I end sweetness, think it's rock your fucking world I think in it's the face. Extracting happiness out of it, though, as well. Yeah, you know I mean, making it more rounded, you mean? <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to call it, whatever words. Danny, what do I do? Sometimes I'll come in, <clears throat> they're, they're doing a pick like down downstairs. I'll come in and be like, you know, sometimes this works for me. Just take the worst one and use that the most and blend them all together. And then I kind of just walk away. <laughs> I love that Danny just shakes his head. You know, but Danny, you know, that works no, but, of the time. It's a, it's it's called, like, I call it the Hail Mary. Blend. Sometimes it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's annoying, for sure. And then, it only works 10 no, but they, And then the excitement in the room, like, erupts. Everybody's like, yeah. <laughs> like, that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, but no, normally 90% of the time is So, disgusting. like, you love when it works, but sometimes it doesn't. Never works. Right, yeah, well, that's I, fair. I would imagine they theory it wouldn't work as often as it doesn't right but when it does it's awesome when it does holy shit but though it's the hail mary nailed it's it often it hail mary, mary. <laughs> sometimes you have sometimes you gotta fall ass backwards or something you know what i mean it's like the lions winning a game you, yeah. just, you know you don't so know how it happened yeah. but you're happy that it worked out hey man they got an offense though man they, these guys they're put up like they, they don't have a defense they could score points though Oh, they couldn't lose last week. Fuck. What was what was the game where it was like seven hundred to seven hundred, or seven hundred <laughs> to seven hundred one? It's like whoever took the under on that game, not a good choice. Yeah, rock. Nailed it. <sighs> Holy smokes. <sighs> okay, dude, that one's so much to blend oh, with, man. It's so fucking. Good. It's too much. It's never too much, dude. It is too much. I haven't had too much yet. You know what I'm saying? You cut off. Um, dude, the uh. Your blend is so light. <laughs> it's almost like there's it wasn't a stave in it. There, that is so fucking toasted. Are no, it, okay, that's right. because you went heavy with yeah, this guy, I this did. this oh black God. feller I'd here. Look that, at that. I'd say that that like, is probably half. If people, oh my lord, is, like, look crazy. at it in front of my hoodie. Wow. Actually, somebody drained the oil of the box truck in that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> what it feels like. It looks like it's viscous as hell, though. Um. Oh, those things extract. You get some good extraction on that stuff. I mean, if, you, if that's what you're in, I mean, those are rich and thick. I think that, dude, <laughs> I keep. So what I'm doing, I just keep adding a little bit of this one to make it softer for you. For everyone. No, just for you. Okay. No one wants to just get hit in the face with a bat. Untrue. But it's just like you chomp, chomp down on it. 
It's just wood. Which is, but it's toasty, warm, cinnamony. That's the blood. Spiced wood. <laughs> it's not metallic and iron. It's beauty <laughs> and anger and it's what you see. What you extract from these staves is all the built up tension. You know what I mean? <laughs> I fucking came with you. <laughs> that's what you're getting, and that's why it's so damn good. You're building tension right now. Oh, I just made it perfect. I just made it perfect. Now per I have no idea can the you ratios. Tell Danny? Yeah, no okay. fucking Danny, idea. unrelated. This uh, A sample on barrel strength is pretty good. Mm, that sounds great. Yeah. Uh, okay, now here's the thing. What people don't know, if you just joined recently, is Mike missed a tasting right before this. So Mike is currently doing said tasting because he missed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we call that an air ball. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'll catch you. I'll watch this. Nope. My, my mixture is better. Yours yeah. is so singularly noted. Singularly noted. No. Yeah. It's, what the fuck? Yeah. You didn't, yours isn't even toasted. This is our problem. <laughs> They're all. Yours is like. They're all toasted. Untoasted, dude. unstaved whiskey is what yours tastes like. Mine tastes like. What was that the, song? What was Rock the unstaved one? one that he, What'd you say? What was the unstaved one that he liked? So Sean likes uh, 777 a lot, I would assume. Yeah. Oh. Is that that is one? the the four grain with the complex stay profile. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's. I'm trying to think what they in the taste of me. The, the the complex is like a medium tannin. It's gonna be a lighter toast. Not with as the light four as grain it works really well. You know where they're using these a lot on? They said is now tequila. Mm. The staves. Yeah. Really? I don't know if that does it for me? I'd have to try it. That's interesting. But. Tequila, they, that's that's the big one. The delicate, not the complex or intense, but the 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 latest one. Sure. Man, dude, I just keep putting them together, and they just it just keeps getting great. Because honestly, for me, I think it's. Did you do so the hail mary blend? blend? Uh, I did, except I left. Um, he has no twenty ninety two out. That was the only one I left out. Fair enough. I haven't put any. You know what? I haven't put any twenty ninety two in here yet. Yeah, why don't you just keep fucking it up? Well, you can't. You can't. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, buddy. How the fuck are you gonna tell Danny how to mix this? I'm though? just gonna let Danny know that this is a bunch of each. Oh, a bunch of each. And Danny will know exactly like what I mean. Like dude. this much of that one? Yeah, give or take. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> like three centimeters of whiskey. Yeah, three centimeters. Buddy. It's like this much, Danny. Again, you, you don't know it. the metric system. Please don't throw that out there. That. That's incredible. That would be the Hail Mary. It actually smells. Now here's the thing: it's a hail mary with all different amounts Jesus of each one, Christ. but it smells fucking incredible. That that is still blowing it up. No, 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 in the in a good way though. It's more tame for sure. The it's still the oil. color of that one though. How about that? I don't know the last time I, I picked up a Glen with this much whiskey in it to <laughs> drink it. Like that's usually our dump glass. It's not bad. I'm not gonna lie. It's good. It's unbalanced. It's it's really well, it hasn't had any time to settle. You got to give it a day or so. Yeah. Okay. We just I just it hasn't even married yet. People would call that unhinged. It's not consummated. <laughs> unhinged. There you go, not buddy. Consummated. Have you guys uh, ever have you guys ever like capped it or put it in a blender or just shook the shit out of it to blend it together? Oh, yeah, yeah, I have. I mean, I'll I'll be be just go like that. Wait, but it's Danny, okay, that motion was 100% what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, demonetized. But Danny <laughs> said, he, he said, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I feel like I am allowed to do it now that, because if I would have done it, you would have gave me shit. But now that Danny Rip said, it. are you about to shake it? it? Yeah. Fucking do it over there. Because if I get whiskey in my eye one more goddamn time because of you. Yeah, I can see li liquid just pouring out. Okay, it is coming out more than I thought, but it is now aerated and mixed and married. and. Constantly. Yeah, look, I can just give the SJ. <laughs> mm, I think I oh like that's way better which one is this which one? don't worry about it two of them oh that's nice yeah it is that's nice yeah that's one and three huh that's one and four that's what i said yeah i don't know about i haven't even tasted it yet how's it taste for you what'd you say would it be about this much one and about this much four yeah give or take no e equal amounts that one's really yeah, nice i can tell you the color looks good that color looks like where I, where I like it that one <laughs> Is probably mm -hmm. the the closest oh, shit. you and I will ever get to agreeing on this. That that's you have really no good. No idea on ratios, do you? Uh, it's about 50-50. roughly. Yeah. Okay. It's as close as I could dribble fifty fifty. I actually there. really like that. I could go get a pipette and do fifty fifty for you. That's legitimately. I will say this. Do you want me to be honest? Or do you want me? To... It's really good. 
That's my favorite one I've had, if I'm being honest. Okay. If I'm not being honest, that's the second best one I've had <laughs> to mine. No, that's by far the best. That, that is um, it's, it's still like a toasty, cinnamony, woody yep. on the back. It gets the it gets the front end palate that I sweet. want, yeah. and it has the back end toasty, slap you on up a little back bit. Back what, yeah. what was one and four? Uh, so that was a seven seven seven, and twenty two ten. I'm gonna I'm gonna recreate this. You're gonna go for a splash and splash. 50, 50. Yeah. I think. Yep. Yeah, okay. 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 Do about that much. Okay. Here we go. Candy's oh watching. Like oh not a fucking trees. chance. Kind of. Mm, it's pretty, close. Pretty close. We have five hats. We we could have done this at least. Would you, would you have it? Show me your little scale that you bring on uh, road trips with you. Well, he he has a drug scale that he does it. Yeah, I didn't think it's sick. <laughs> Mike's like, we know exactly what we can take on airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we don't have a scale that we can do it by weight. We can do it by volume because we're I have, I have like last time we went to Chicago. I, I do it every time we're at a retailer. I, I always usually bust it out, but I'm like, every time Danny busts it out, we I'm like, I always say, Well, we know what his previous career was. <laughs> <laughs> they laugh, I get a chuckle out of it. It's pretty funny. <laughs> you know, it's an icebreaker. And then Danny pulls out, you know, hard drugs and they're like, Whoa, holy whoa, shit. whoa, whoa, whoa. And he's like, Oh, wait, uh, wrong deal. That's oh, you're tomorrow. not here for the meth party. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sick of this joke. He just pulls it up. I thought this was a whole different store. Holy shit. Guys, it's just flour for real. It's uh, $80 an ounce. Uh, <laughs> okay. So let me smell. Is this the yes. one? Okay. Yours smells. I think yours smells better than mine. So I good. And mine's roughly. No, they're. Well, they're the same, buddy. They're supposed to be the same. It's not oh, good. Shit. If, yeah. It's not good if yours smells better. No, no, they're. This, okay. So roughly 50 50 on those two is freaking awesome. Yeah. Like legitimately. But, well, we could, but that leaves. It, that's try like a couple different things. That's like not picking like the biggest guy for the football team. It's like a, this is this is still hey buddy, we're doing a trick play. We don't need him. You really it's want like, that you guy, just right? Fucking you sad want that it's guy. Like, it, it, dude, it's like Jerome Bettis being up for grabs. You're like, nah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. What are we doing? You know what? Uh, fourth and one yeah. Super Bowl. Let's throw, throw it. Throw the ball. That is what you're saying. <laughs> Do you have someone called Beast Mode on your team? Throw it. <laughs> okay. It's too much. This is that is that is. I will admit that's a hair one. If if you were, oh, I know. If you were gonna blend with that, you got to do the tiniest amount. It's got to be like a okay. three to one with something let's, outside let's that. See. Let's see. Oh God. Yeah. I said three to one, not three to one million. That's better. Okay. That was super scientific. Thank God I did that. It was better. Don't. Okay. Don't wash your hand in the whiskey and tell me to try it. Rip it. Listen, Mike, Just, what sample like, are you on of the barrel proofs, dude? Sample D. You're on D. Oh, you've made, a, you've made some progress. I've been making great progress. Danny, I'm, I'm liking A. That's not, that's good. It's really good. G's good too. So you blend, Danny. So how does this work? You blend six of them, basically. Kind of like whittle it down, and then, you know, figure out. Usually four, but this time came up with five, and then, kind of like I walked out to my garage to let out the trash, and there were six samples in a cigar bag. <laughs> <laughs> I left you something sitting by the garage in a cigar bag. Not even a note. <laughs> Not even a note. This one, this one is for you, by the Mike way. Mike actually has no idea what he's drinking right now. By the way, they're yeah, just, <laughs> they're just a note. These it's, might be from Danny. What do you think of C? C was good. I did like it. Sticker idea for the one Dan likes. It's called "Spank Me, Daddy," and the image is Dan standing there in a leather, in leather, holding a toasted stave. That's a great <laughs> sticker yeah, idea. No, sticker. not for like a bottle, but just not in for general. anyone that has sell eyes. That sticker. Yeah, if anyone has eyes, they will not like that sticker. I think I actually like it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. You could go to a, like a Catholic school back in the day with that, a hundred percent. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. That's like a giant ruler. <laughs> yeah, that's why I keep them in here. It's actually worse. It is. <laughs> With that little bit. The nose goes down. Uh-huh. I haven't drank it, but it does. I agree that the two are better than the three with that rough 
estimate of whatever the hell we put yeah i mean we could we could try a third on each but honestly that feels those, like it, it muted the nose those two together i, I do are like phenomenal. legitimately like a lot uh as a past fan who was at the super bowl i definitely think seattle made a great decision to throw it from the one <laughs> with beast mode in the backfield so gonna, <laughs> thanks for hanging out buddy thanks for the super chat Toshi. he's like you know what would have been great for my career one more super bowl one more <laughs> okay. it was in my hands almost yeah see i think what that did was made it made this more stringent mm -hmm. like it pops out like the worst time. parts of it yeah it's like one of those boxes you crank till the thing comes out of it jack in the box yes i what are some of the good what uh what are uh, a lot of good barrel picks you guys have been doing recently anything standing out so oh, we, we just went to mythology in colorado and oh, yeah. we picked a 10 year old 127 proof mgp rye mm -hmm. and Dude, so we picked from four of them, and that's that has to be like the most celebration bottle we've ever like. Yeah, it, it awesome. like when we were drinking it, I'm like this in my this in my head 100 percent competes with Kentucky All Rise, yeah. like without a doubt. That's awesome. That's well, awesome. we talked about the bottles we'd put it against, and it was all like limited, hard to find, fucking big boy <laughs> rise to put it yeah, against. It was yeah. like, oh shit, it was like. Yeah. What was the All match right. on? Was it high ride 36 or was it a ride whiskey? It was a uh, rye, so it's 95.5. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was I love it. Dude, the weird part is MGP after like six years seems to start to get sweeter rather than like spicier or dilly or whatever. Yeah, you lose that. And man, it was so, it was so incredibly sweet, but it still had like the warm baking spices, but they're all just buried in the back and there was no dill there's no like that like stereotypical younger MGP rye, and I the, he wow. was like guess the proof on it, and he gave everything to us blind, just batch or uh, barrel numbers, and I was the highest one at 116, yeah, and then he was like oh it's 127, I was like oh, yeah, <laughs> God, what, was it aged outside of MGP? Yeah, it was aged. Um, I don't know for how long. I don't know where like where they obtained it. Where the majority of its life was, but I yeah. know that it's been aged in Colorado, um, in Denver. So I've noticed. I've noticed that like you lose that dill kind of. Well, it gets sweeter our, when you're outside of the Indiana. Oh, interesting. Really? Yeah. We we so our Tokai, we actually got those barrels from Whistlepig. The oh, really? And okay. they were aged in upstate New York, and that was like the first thing we noticed. It was like. Just had a little bit, like a little, not crazy, still in the family, right? That, that some of that, some of those kind of similarities that you see from the stuff in Lawrenceburg was a little bit different. Coming and from he also Australia. said in the last nine months, it had shot up a ridiculous amount. He, he had lost, lost like, like three, three gallons, gallons of, yeah, oh. because he he uh, was weighing them, and it was uh, twenty like four pounds or something. I was like, that's literally three gallons of yeah, water. He said it lost three gallons, and the proof like. Well, how much did the proof go? I don't on? remember how much. A it lot. jumped significantly, yeah. but he said it's been insanely hot there. Mm -hmm. So I don't. It was just yeah, like, they said several hundred dollar or hundred dollar hundred degree days, like in yeah. a row in Colorado where they're at. Huh. Oh, yeah, those guys. That's I'm sure those are awesome, dude. Yeah, that's awesome. It was before that. It was that. It was easy. Cheers, that our Big best Vic. rye pick. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, Big Vic. Um, it was easy that Sagamore Swordfish Oil. Our second Sagamore pick oh, yeah. was easily the best ride we'd ever picked ever. Um, and I don't know that there was like a super close second. No. And uh, now sure I, won. <laughs> I think that like this mythology thing drinks so special that it's mm -hmm. like the mythology thing is like competing. Like we're like, it's better than wild Turkey cornerstone. It's oh, yeah. better than it's as good as some Kentucky all rise. It's at, you know, and it was like the fact that we're even comparing this to those bottles is pretty wild. So Where'd that guy come? Did, where did he come from? Was, wasn't he like somewhere? Was he? Didn't he have a? a he's got a good background in this space, doesn't um, he? So, so well, one of them. Mythology is weird because mythology started. There's there's a guy named Scott, and Scott starts this distillery or it's whatever you think technically. Uh, Scott starts a distillery. Well, then he hires Scott, or Scott becomes a consultant. This other Scott, which was one of the master blenders from High West. So when, right. Constell, when Constellation bought High West, a bunch of their blenders left. Scott, one of the master blenders over there, um, went and basically set up mythology. And then Scott yeah. left. And now Chris is the guy that is the blender distiller over there. And Chris was the guy that ran the whole barrel program for Blom back in like the heyday of like all the crazy That's MGP right. single barrels. And 
that yeah, kind of so stuff. I mean, you so, tell me that. I was that that that's cool. Yeah, and they got a yeah. good setup out there. I bet. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting, man. Like, e- like, and they're moving soon. Yeah, they're moving to a different nice. place. It's still in Colorado, but yeah, it's like a couple hours away. Like three hours or something like Steamboat, that. Steamboat. Steamboat is the name Steamboat, of it. I think, yeah. But I don't. That one was like comes to mind because it was so recent. It's called Aspen. Aspen. Yep. Aspen. <laughs> yep. Dale. We know, also got to hang out with uh, Dara. We did. We hung out with Dara. Oh, you guys are the absolute bed. Loved you. Love all you guys. Cheers. Yeah. It was super Cheers. nice to hang out with them at Clearwater for a day. Clearwater? Oh, yeah. That was Holy Copper Sky. shit. Clearwater was Utah, though. Yep. Um, Same vibe, though. You know, just hanging out, having a good time. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I started with a C, so my brain was like, do it. What else have we picked this year? Well, we're at That's uh, really good. Old Elk, and that was our first oh my um, wheat whiskey that we've ever done a pick of. We picked two whiskeys. We took, picked two barrels at Old Elk. We're like, this is yeah. from Greg Nett. We'll take it. We we got, we, we, our wheat what? whiskeys. You love them? We got, we got some of the original, and they're Greg's. They were like his. Yeah. He created them. Uh, what are they? They're going on 10 years in April. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, our picks yeah. are nine. So. We had uh, ranges from seven to nine years in the wheat whiskey, and I think that was the standout of every distillate they had. Yeah. Because we had a, a bourbon, wheat whiskey, weeded bourbon, and it's port finished bourbon or something like Which that. Port finished bourbon, malted, yeah. high malted yeah. barley. And I uh, stand out for everyone uh, was the, the wheat whiskey lineup. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It, yeah. It was, and like, it was also really cool and crazy to like drink that distillate with Greg. You know what I mean? Like he made it, but we weren't at MGP. We were yeah. at Old Elk with Greg drinking yeah. his MGP cool. distillate. It was really, really cool, but experience wise. Um, Russell's. We did a Russell's pick. I mean, oh, I, so we got, we got to do a stag pick this year because our, I don't, I don't count that. Our buddy Brandon <laughs> was in that, um, single, that single barrel select, uh, like, Everybody gets in line or whatever. He was third. He ended up getting third. Yeah. And so he got a stag junior pick. And so we did that. That's like probably the best pick we've ever done. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I mean, how many, shit. they gave you like three samples. You picked from the, the three or four or five. Yeah, well, yeah we went there. And they we went they rolled out four there. barrels. And was Dan was like, I'm not leaving until you fucking kick me out. And the guy goes, well, that happens in an hour and a half. Yeah. So we're in the Rick house doing the barrel pick. It's cold as fuck. Right. Yeah. And we're in the rig house, and Sean walks. We had a good size group, seven people or something like that, somewhere around there. Yeah. And and Sean walks over me, goes, "All right, man. So uh, normally, what we do, like if we have four, normally everybody rules out two, right? And then we'll just blind the other two, and whatever one wins wins." So Sean walks over, he goes, "You got your two?" And I go, "What?" And he goes, "You got your two?" And I go, "No." Nah. Nah. And he goes, "How many did you do?" And I go, "None." And he's like, "Hey, what the fuck?" <laughs> and I turn around and I look at the like the guy who that runs the single barrel program there. He's just standing there. He's chatting with somebody else, and I go. I probably will never be here again, ever. I don't. I doubt I'll ever be invited back. We weren't invited this time. We just yeah. technically Brandon won this. And I was like, until they make me leave, I will drink this stag from those barrels and say, fuck it. I procrastinate on <laughs> everything. But when we get to a pick, my brain's like, we need to do, do this pick. now. And That's then awesome. and then we just do all the rest of the shit. I Dan's looked, like, you know what? We'll, I, we'll intermingle. I looked at the barrel program guy and I go, how... When do we have to leave? Because he had another pick that day. And he's like, like, uh, you got to be out of here by like one. And it was like 1130. And I'm like, that sounds great. That sounds fucking awesome, man. <laughs> that ick. You're like, you're like sipping it. You're like, yeah, just tell him to come in. I'll move away. I'm not yeah, going anywhere. <laughs> exactly. Dude, it was amazing. I don't know if that's a real pick there, Chris. He said, just cracked the Penelope, barrel strength, juice and booze, oh, yeah, child sure. life right. pick. That was from Aaron down at uh, Happy Hour. I remember that. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Good stuff, man. Thanks. Uh, Josh Monk just found out. Uh, apparently, you guys are dropping in Minnesota this week. Very excited. I have to drive to Wisconsin. Wisconsin we did today at 2 yeah. o'clock. We just oh, got a shit. picture of all the pallets ready to go out of the warehouse. Nice. Well, congrats to you guys. That's yeah. awesome. No, we're excited about Minnesota. It's awesome. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. It said Penelope does some great stuff. They do. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. They even put up with us. True. <laughs> Did you guys um, wait a second? Is that a new sign? Yeah, the whole backdrop. I think. Oh, backdrop. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, we're in an entirely oh, different building. When is the Reno? When was the Reno? Um, two three months ago. Dude, it looks no, good. We, so we moved from like we had like a two August is technically when we came in here. Two hundred seventy square foot building. Yeah, yeah August. Oh yeah. Um, and then this is like thirteen hundred, so we bumped up a decent amount. Just a thousand awesome. square foot. Yeah, it looks like really good. 
So now we have. I get the worst lighting in the world. Yeah, well, yeah. we do. We actually <laughs> just figured out how to make this not as bad, but it's still not. Yeah, great. we're not there yet. I'm trying to figure it out, but we it's bought so a sign. Sick. Sign cost a metric shit ton of money, and then didn't have a fucking dimmer. And we and tried three. I ones. bought a dimmer from the guy who sold us the sign, and the <laughs> dimmer doesn't fucking work, dude. Yeah, this one right it's here. It's fucking crazy that we're dealing with this shit when the sign costs as much <laughs> as it costs. But um, <laughs> but yeah. We have like there's an office over there, and then there's two studios there. So the live stream sets out in like this main area, and mm-hmm. then we have like the one studio is not finished, the other one's finished. So, but well, it looks awesome, badass. Oh, it's definitely like hey, we, we got a like, game. We got to get like signage. they have more space than we do in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you guys can run it here. Unfortunately, we can't DSP my home address, so it's not commercial. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, space awesome. is a pain in the ass where we live hmm. i believe yeah. that a hundred percent yeah you guys are in you guys are in jersey like mm-hmm. in jersey right yeah yeah space has to be a fucking nightmare thank god there's a lot of it around there yeah <clears throat> it doesn't already have a building yeah, on it cities are super known for just wide open spaces yeah it's like tokyo it's tight, you know it's a little tight right <laughs> i mean but we, we've been at the same spot since we started same exact spot um I don't know, kind of, but it's nice to do it all ourselves. We've always shipped it out ourselves. Um, you know, a little snug right now, but it's it's all right. Danny, this, by the way, this is like a topic of discussion every single day between Danny and I. I'm yeah. like, we got to find a new spot. We got to move. Uh-huh. Um, eventually, we're going to have to figure that out. You know that, Danny, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. right there. And then you have to move everything. <laughs> like, that's the terrifying part is you find the new space especially with you guys having all the equipment and shit you guys have, you have to move all of it. And it's like, fuck. it'll be like us. We'll be like, man, we got so much more room. And then we just filled it up with shit. And we're like, where the hell did half this come from? It fit. Yeah. Before, yeah. Patrick Knight, poor Danny can't get in a word. Cause Dan talks. So I'll just say too much. <laughs> Cheers guys. Love the Penelope line. Cheers, man. Thanks for Patrick, super chat. Man, I met, I met Patrick up in Massachusetts back in April. He's now he's out in Montana. Good. Good hearing you from Patrick. Nice. Oh, uh, Adam quickly said, super excited for the re- presenter tasting with Michael at St. Louis Bourbon Festival this weekend. Love nice. their stuff. And Danny, too. Danny right. will be there, too. Looking forward to seeing you. What else we got? Uh, Henry Turner, I need that Penelope Valencia to drop in central Arkansas. Soon. Cheers, Junkies. It's, it's a coming. Trevor Deal just cracked a Penelope toasted four grain barrel proof from Party Source, and it's <laughs> Legend, wait for it, dairy. When is Penelope <laughs> coming to Michigan? Yeah, what the f? Yeah. What was it about? I, I, I we were, we were, we had a, we had a call, and then I think I almost fell over because of the taxes. Oh yeah, <laughs> Michigan hates. And happiness. they were like, "Hey, do you want to sell here? Because you got to pay our distributors an insane amount, and then the store will also want an insane amount." No, so. the stores mark up it in was, Michigan. It was nothing like we've ever seen. The, and I thought there was a big conspiracy theory on us. I go, wait, I gotta call someone else that's here. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? It's got to be good to know that we should never distribute in Michigan. No, we're trying not to. That's good news. Man. Joy's a three tier system. Yeah. Well, that's no, the we gotta so, do Michigan. And we we get a lot of requests. I think we, okay. we we we're looking at Michigan for uh, early next year. So the um it's it's wild because Michigan has and not not compared to like I, like DC's taxes are super high or whatever. Not compared to like the highest states, but Michigan has some of the higher like state minimums in the country for On everything that in, inspires happiness. For, yeah, for whiskey. And so the shitty part is like in Kentucky or whatever, like stores mark up like thirty re, and retailers mark up like around thirty percent or whatever. Michigan only marks up the stores mark up is fifteen percent here. Yeah, but. The government oh. just rocks the shit out of the pricing. So Man. it's they take like, an 80% um, markup. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like the retailers don't even get Everyone part of the less, pie there. Except yeah. for the government. But it's unfortunate. But you got to figure it out now. What we're, I know we, we've had a bunch of calls about it. It's it's definitely in the queue. One WD took a bottle of Penelope to Deer Camp and had to explain where the name came from to the other idiots with me before they got too rowdy. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Good on you, One WD. I'm telling That's you, buddy. Awesome. That's it right there, man. You just reblend the same. That was a, a scientific amount of. Did you meat. do it at the same time? Yeah, genius. That's yeah. so smart. So I could just start <laughs> pouring. Still digging the the seven 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 and the two two one zero. That I think that's it. I think that is our favorite. 
both of our favorites. I think that's the balance between the two. Danny be like, I'll fix it. Don't worry. Danny's like, I'll make it better than that. Two two one zero. Uh, well, what we yeah. normally what we what we'll do is we'll yeah, we're gonna yeah. send that exact. Well, you know, I think you guys had 50-50 split on that, give or take. Yeah, roughly plus or well, minus. We'll, roughly. We'll, we'll we'll send you guys that maybe maybe one variation of it and a couple of random ones to blind it. Yeah. Okay, that'd be awesome. yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be super man. Cool. That's super good. That that one is that one feels. I'm gonna be honest. That one feels like the yin yang blend. I uh, I blended yeah. Penelope Architect Five for him. Don't worry about it, guys. <laughs> what do you look like we can't do? Uh, Danny's gonna taste me like. Uh, Danny, did you take notes on that? Uh, when yeah, is, like uh, just rip it. Uh, just drop <laughs> like, that down, Dan, if you don't mind. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know. Anyone that, that would. Say I'm that. gonna send you build five. It's identical. <laughs> Man, that tastes super familiar. Yeah. Okay. So there was one. There's something that I said we that we would write it do. down on my sheet of notes. <laughs> wait, wait. Re, can wait, you reshow us that? Show us that again. That was, this would drive my crazy. <laughs> oh oh wow, shit. dude! You know what that's oh, like? No. That's like the movie. What's the Jim Carrey movie where he's writing on the walls and it's just twenty three or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah twenty three. I was. I really thought you'd be like, "Wow, Sean's notebook looks exactly like that." Sean's notebook is a disaster. It doesn't quite look like that though. Because I needed Dan to look at a page the other day. I was like, "It's in the third section near the front," and he started going through. It was like, "What the fuck?" Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Looking into Sean's brain, I was like, holy shit. Well, dude, it's better. We used to not take notes. We used to do this and have fun and we're laughing and we're having a good time. And then all of a sudden it would end next day. And they're like, I'm like, Danny, uh, and we talking to each other. Mike, did and Mike, did you uh, write down what they what they wanted to do? And both of us be like, No, I like, thought you did. I thought, I thought, you, were. I thought you did. <laughs> you know how many times we've had to go back being like, Oh, this is kind of embarrassing, but like. So what did you pick? <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah, what's become more popular for us is we keep getting asked, uh, what were the barrels that you picked? Oh, what, what were yeah, the numbers? Dude, like the barrel numbers, yeah. And we're like, what? What do you mean, what numbers? Yeah, like, we don't pay attention. It's something we picked six months ago. We didn't tell you the barrel number. One of them we were there at the place for, and they were like, which barrel? Um, we're like, C? I don't... I, we I, picked it six months ago. I couldn't tell you what your barrel number was in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. yeah. And meanwhile, they're sitting there going, perfect. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah no. <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah, it was uh, 246. Yeah. They go, yeah, oh, yeah, like, send it. Yeah, we found yeah, it. No, no, no. We found no. It. Yeah, that, it is tricky. I mean, even... I mean, it's a hard thing to keep track of. We, we yeah. use the whiskey systems, but it's still tricky, but... I told Dan, I was like, that, right. When we first started the barrel program in Roselle, we It'd didn't even like, know to take notes. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Well, I take notes, makes, but I don't normally write down the barrel number. I assume when we're there and we're like, all right, we're locking in with you. This is our barrel. They're going to write that down. And they might. Mm. And they might just lose it. Yeah, they but the problem is they wrote it in a matchbook yeah. and then threw it the fuck away. Yeah. Good luck, everybody. So all right. Just, you you know, write your nice name on the barrel. That, you know, other people... Have the similar yeah. challenges. <laughs> right. Other people struggle with note taking, like we do. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so I did ask patrons earlier today, about four hours ago, according to Patreon, uh, if people had like questions for you guys, and oh, nice. we we had a handful. So, what is what is David's question? Where are we looking? How much is a sample? How much of a sample? Because is you shit. Oh, because I mixed the thing. Okay. Anyways, when is this is going to be question <laughs> number amateur one? Amateur hour. Because <laughs> this, uh, you guys already kind of answered what's the current production volume, uh, and then where's the ideal production volume? Because you kind of mentioned the ten thousand gallon tanks being like more efficient and being able to batch like a couple, two, three a year, or something like that, rather than constantly batching. Um, <clears throat> What are your, he also said? What are your guys' favorite lines thus far from Penelope? What do you think, Danny? What's your favorite line? <laughs> you always throw it to me. I'll throw yeah, it but out. that could be like, what's your favorite thing to work on? Like, it, it can be anything random. Look, I, I, my weekend thing is the the four grain eighty proof. Mike always is like, really? Yeah interesting i think it's because i'm drinking the barrel strength all week yeah. and it's like i just want to i just want to relax like yeah the 80 and i put it with like seltzer water and lemon yeah. and i just mm. that's like that's my refreshing weekend drink 
Well, you're uh, drinking this shit all, all day. You want like a yeah. wine spritzer at that point. <laughs> we've been we've been doing a lot of like the architects and the toasteds and working on Tokai and some like other finishes and things like that. So like if I am grabbing a glass, like I'll go to the barrel strength because it's just like it's all grain forward. You know, there's and there's so there's so much depth to it with the grains that it's kind of like refreshing after dealing with the toasted and the architect all week. Right. Kind of back to like the basics with the the flavor profiles at that point. It really is because it's, you know, it, it's uh, it's the the barrel strength usually in that like four year mark where you're you're kind of teeter tottering on the the oak influence versus the the grains in their in their like raw form. Mm -hmm. So it's still mostly grain forward, which I really like because it's like especially with the four grains, you can you can taste them all, and I like seeing the variation between the different batches. It's not. You know, it's not just all barrel and this or that. Right. That's, um, it's interesting because it's things like, it's stories like that where you hear like people in the industry when they're not at work, right? Like the thing like with Elmer was that he drank all, his whiskey with Sprite like all the time. Like yeah. that was his thing. And it's one of those things where it was just like, you hear people talk about, but you hear people like you talk to people who make products that you like or enjoy or like that are special or whatever. And then you find out that it's like they also like just, you know, like you said, throw like people, seltzer yeah. water in, in like an 80 proofer and call it a day. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you were but, doing that on Saturday. You were ripping oh, those yeah. things. With the lemon. And he had like 14 of them though. So I don't know if that counts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just took yeah, You could say that. like he's taking a break, but you, did, you literally probably had like 14 or 15 of those. Oh, it was like races. a special event. It was these, it, we had these horse races in New Jersey and. We had a big, we had a big spot, and we had yeah. a big party up there, and it was a good. Oh, time. that's cool. That's fun. Yeah, it was a good time. I, I, I tell you though, with for me, I, I'm really, um, my palate kind of goes with what our stuff is like right now. I've been loving Architect. Um, I don't know. I mean, we, I was going. I, if you would ask me four months ago, I'd be all about toasted, but I, nothing wrong with them. But I, right now, I'm just really like I built three. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I mean, that one was was my favorite. I rarely pull bottles of our own. I'm usually like, if I need to want to have something to drink, like I'll like bring stuff like this sure. in the office. And, uh, I mean, even I, I've gone through, you know, one or two of those. I, I really like that bill three quite a bit. I do too. I'm a big fan of the, um, I, I, I think I it was like, nice too, the drinkability. It wasn't a cast drink. It was nice. It was a little bit more drink, like, like a mm -hmm. lower proof, like, it's something I don't know if we've been drinking a lot of cast strength lately, but the, the, the something about the drinkability of it was nice. I like low hundreds though. Like low hundreds yeah, is such a too. sweet spot. You get a lot of the flavor. You really get to taste the what the whiskey is about, yeah. but it doesn't destroy you. Yeah, and you can oh have you can, you can drink like a normal amount. Like when yeah. things are 130, 140 proof, it's like I'll have a drink. You know what I mean? And then I need to gauge what's happening for yeah. the next hour. When like oof. when you have a hundred and five proof, you're like I can have a couple drinks and still operate like a normal human yeah. being. <laughs> right. What what's your guys' uh, anti acid regimen like? Because you know, omeprazole, that's what I you know. Um... Uh, so, uh, seltzer water so with uh, two dashes of bitters. Oh my gosh! Wait, does that work? Yeah, Dang, I don't even know what, what do you, like, I don't even know what that means. I'm trying that a hundred percent. Thousand and ten. You just like take bitters and just go? No, no, no. Just take like uh, eight to twelve ounces of seltzer water and and just do do two dashes of bitters, mix really? it up and drink it, and it really you know it's not as good as like a like a prevacid or something, but it, it really, it helps. Interesting. Good to know. I don't That's even know probably. about this. What, what is this for? Just because in the next morning you feel like crap? No, no, just heartburn. Oh yeah. yeah. What about Tums? Just take Tums. Oh, Tums, Tums, Tums are bullshit. bullshit. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Tums do not work, dude. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I didn't know this guy doesn't yeah. have heartburn. Yeah. He's never had yeah. heartburn he's in his life, dude. He, he took a Tum as a candy one. He's all good. I, I might as well fucking take those uh, Smarties candies. It's just the same thing. Dude, I swear to God, I used to take Tums when I was younger, and I was like, damn, that sat weird, right? And it would work. Yeah. As an old ass grown <laughs> adult, dude, if I take Tums, my body's like, you didn't even fucking try to deal yeah. with this. Like, oh. Pepsi, dude, where it's so at. You gotta... I don't know how many Tums you're supposed to take, but it's not as many as I would need. The bottle. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's so funny I'm because gonna... when I see older people taking them, they always got the big jars on them. 
Mm-hmm. That's because they only yeah. sell them in big jars. It's also because you need that many. Why don't you just bring like one or two with you? And they always have the whole jar because they're just popping them all day. <laughs> Constantly. So, somebody, like asked about, somebody asked about uh, not to like drive the questions here. Oh, you're good. Like a daddy. <laughs> Do hey, it. No, over over over. I saw one question that kind of jumped out at me. It was uh, wait, wait, how do you get the questions? I forgot. I just looked at you it. Like chat? A, if you click this thing that says comments, no, it's blank. It says it's blank. Are you you're in private chat? I think. Oh, you... no, holy shit! It. Look at all these comments. It was something about uh, holy like a, like at what age do the does the oak start taking over, and that's what I think. I think that's what's really worked with with our blends is that at at like our four-year mark they're still pretty young mgp oh, stuff cool. right you get you get some of that ethanol and things like that but the beauty of it is that when we start blending different mash bills together we can push out a lot of that youthfulness and pull out the grain profiles which i think is really phenomenal before that oak starts coming in and and taking over so like i think in that I think in that four to five year mark, you can really blend to the grains and then six and six plus the oak starts taking over and it's a whole different way of putting mm. the whiskey together. That's so it's an interesting, that's super interesting. Yeah. Well, you don't often hear people discuss younger whiskey, right? Because no, what people generally talk about is like once it hits X, like if we have four year old whiskey, once it hits eight, it's going to be great, whatever. There's not like a lot of focus and concentration on like what can we do with it right now because it's it's here and this is where this is the profile we're working on. Yeah. yeah. yeah what but there's something to be said about, about the, the, the grain profile with Vitru. Well, like what's the age on it? What'd you say? With with you guys with the, the brand you guys will launch, what's the age on the the barrels you're working with? It's all different right now. Um, we have some six year rye. Oh, um, we have some three year bourbon from say Sagamore that Sagamore distilled. We have some yeah. four year bourbon that Sagamore mm-hmm. distilled. We have some five year MGP. We have six, six year, year light, light whiskey, I yeah. think, from MGP. Yep. Um, yeah. it's just kind of all over the place, and then we have like three or four month old new make right now. So. That's awesome. You got a nice little, you know, got a nice portfolio to pull from. Yeah. The, the goal is to like keep doing the contract distilling as much as we can possibly afford it so that all of that's coming up in age is so that we can start like once all those things start to hit the ages we need, we like have for like what we think is a lot for us. Right. Like, Cause then once those things happen, then it's like, this is way easier. Like we don't like right now we're going to be like blending and choosing barrels based on like inventory rather than like, this is what we actually would love to like yeah. right now. We'd love to put like a four or five barrel blend out right now and then drop two single barrels. But then it's like, fuck that's seven barrels and we have 40 whatever aged barrels. Right. So yeah. it's one of those things mm-hmm. like, and realistically our MGP needs to sit in age right now. Like it's not great yeah. right now. So mm-hmm. um, it is one of those things where it's like, if if we can use the stuff that we really enjoy right now, which we do we'll think run is out of it ready, fast. but we will run out fast, but that will in theory give us time to let MGP age out and then it'll give our new make time to age. We have a decent amount of rye for us, which is great. Um, but yeah, so I think like we're just going to have to like dance around and play a lot with planning yeah. um, releases yeah. and stuff and how big they are and stuff like that. So it's, I mean, that's the cool part, but I mean, you and you were telling me, Danny, that the, uh, the, the Sagamore new makes like, Fantastic, Dan. We gotta. I, and I'm talking to Danny Police. We should go. I remember Dan was telling me and Sean. I mean that that uh, we should go down there and talk to him. Yeah, dude. And and BT is like guy. the greatest guy. I think Mike, you've talked yeah. to Brian, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, really nice guy. Dude, nice. he's great. And um, I. It's one of those things where thankfully the two mash bills that were contract distilling at Sagamore we got to try at three and four years. Um, yeah. Which is awesome. But That's what unfortunately, we're going for. With. All of like that that whiskey's just gone and it doesn't exist anymore. And they weren't making it. So we those are like the two mash bills were contract distilling with Sagamore now. Mm-hmm. Like they don't make nobody else is using or making. Um but there's it's cool because we know like when we try the new make, we don't have to be like, I don't know what this is gonna be like in four years. Yeah, we do there's know, way you know less I mean? of a gamble so, on what mm-hmm. it's gonna taste like in the future. It's tried and true through their still. Uh, with their cooperage, everything's like we know where it should be in three years. We should know yeah. where it's at in four years. 
Um, we just don't have just the stuff. Yeah, it's comforting. But I mean, we wish we had more. We've but... done it the same way, man. We we still bootstrap, and I mean, we're still doing it. I mean, you know, now we have got gotten to a point where we have a bank loan, uh, not even a massive one, but we're constantly emailing them. Sure. Can we get more? Uh, right. But that's yeah. you know, <laughs> it's like literally today. Hey, you're like, uh, how much is, more is there an extra need? zero after that? We got to like we have a couple bills we got to pay. Right. It never ends, man. But that's the fun part. Um. Well, and that's then, what I've told Sean this so many times. Like Sean and I also are talking about the money we're spending or like what we owe for barrels, where and all this stuff. And then I'm like, listen, dude, Mike told me it's about managing. It's not about not having debt. It's about managing the debt that you're in efficiently and doing it correctly. I'm like, that's all we got to do, man. And I said, did we out. buy a fucking house together? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Yeah. You're like Danny and I remember we had to have serious conversations. We're like, oh, um, we can't just sign it on our own. Like it's personal guarantees. Mm-hmm. Sure. And we're like, do we tell our wife? About oh, I didn't sign shit. It's all on Dan. <laughs> he doesn't know that yet. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. I, I signed know. it Mike Concho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I Kevin just, Hansen, yeah, he said, Can you like these guys? Nice to know, you know, we don't have to, you guys, just like us, the, the, all of us, we don't have to report to anybody. Yeah, if you want to make it, if you want to make a co- totally crazy product, you can do it, and you know, and just can kind of run the That's company right. the way you want to run it. Yeah, well, you, you've you also, um, we, we launched it publicly two weeks know, ago, two weeks ago, or three yeah. weeks ago now. Um, but you you guys have been like super insanely helpful mm-hmm. and like with just answering questions and being supportive. And like, if we needed something like there was help there from you guys, like they, there, there were, there were realistically at the time there were three brands and then realistically like five people in those three brands that have been insanely helpful. And you guys were for real two of them. Yeah. And so we appreciate the hell out of it. Cause a lot of things would have taken a lot longer and have been a lot more stressful or like confusing or whatever the word would be. Yeah. Um, without the help. So seriously, like you guys have been no, fucking man, awesome. We appreciate, we appreciate it. it. It's a, that's nothing. And Hey, did you ever go with, uh, did you ever go with Jimmy Owens on the, the glass bottles? Did you ever yes. Jimmy Owens? Yes. Yes. Great guy. Character. Love we, we bought, we, dude, it's a fucking, we didn't get the business. It's a whole fucking, <laughs> it's a story. Shit show. Um, but we did, we bought our first order was like 3,300 bottles. Um, but yeah, it's a fucking, it, it was very interesting. Getting them to where they are now. Uh, I'm surprised as many of the pallets survived. Let's just say that. (laughs) Oh, I I heard about this. I remember I heard about this. Not only shipping, uh, Dan was a factor in a lot of them. So not a lot in one pallet. I was a factor in one pallet. Yes. But it came on three. Let's put it this way. Our bottles came, our glass came on three pallets. It's now on seven. <laughs> so that's kind of where we're at with the whole thing. We didn't know they stacked nine foot high. high. I remember in the beginning, you sent me pictures of a whole trailer, like all the pallets. That was it. Yep. That, that, was that, it. Was, that was when it was on three. Yep. And you're like, how, like, how does this happen? Dude, we had to this break them down to even move them. Like, we couldn't fucking move them. Yeah. It was like, what are we going to do with this shit? And then the guy uh, the guy driving the semi-truck was like, I can't fucking move these things. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean you we, can't move them? Like, this is What would job. you like me to do, sir? <laughs> yeah. If you can't move them, I definitely can't. So <laughs> That's um, happened on many occasions, yeah. It's it was crazy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. The first time I told you about it, you're like, yeah, that shit happens. I'm like, what? What it do you mean me- that shit? It makes me feel so good to know it wasn't just us. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but then it hasn't happened in a while. I thought maybe you had like a trick of the trade. You're like, no, you got to like strap this to this and attach that to this and this. But no, they didn't strap shit. Like they were like, good luck. Yeah, our truck driver did not know what a strap was. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't quick. know. I mean, they those things still happen, but like we're just, you just, you just numb to, to it. Deal with them. Yeah. <laughs> or you just deal with them. You're just, yeah, you're numb. We just yeah. had an issue with uh, two containers of glass right. coming over with uh, like. No, oh, it was six, six containers. Sticky. Shit. Well, you only told me two. Maybe you just didn't want me to freak well, out. Those were the, those were the. Decorated. You told me yeah. two, by the way. So six <laughs> is a very different subject matter. Heavy on the edge. Like, it, it was like, it looked like, um, like the fluorescent green thing and like the entry of the Simpsons. Now the glass. Like the, was, when the glass it? It gets weird. blown, there's a mold that goes together. Sure. And the mold gets sprayed with this stuff so that the mold breaks away from the glass after mm-hmm. it's done. And if they put too much of it, it leaves this residue. 
It's like some number like T58. And uh, so if, if there's too much on it, when you put a label on it, it won't stick. Awesome. <laughs> what? Yeah. So you get all these bottles and, and your labels aren't sticking to them. And so, you don't find out until you try to label them. Yeah. Well, luckily, like we have checks in place now where okay. we caught it before it went into a production run and we were able to, but still you're moving around all these containers of glass. It's like, and you never know with some of these cats, like it could be like a problem area. Six, like that's, you know, it's, that's a lot. Oh, right. Oh, and the Danny called them and took them all back. They like they already knew this was a problem. Are and you serious? Yeah, it wasn't even us. It was it's been Dude. how nice of them. That's but like crazy. that's I the was thing. Very you're surprised. There you go. You oh, start nice. checking. Yeah. You start checking things. Nice, Luke. Or you start knowing what to look for and checking Luke's them early. Guy. Dude, that's nice. wild. Yeah. They were shit. just like maybe they won't notice. That's why the bigger <laughs> the, the bigger the runs get, the more it's like oh shit, like right something goes wrong, like you. Well, it's You're, a significantly larger investment at that yeah. point. I mean, That's why we don't sleep. Danny, you Another did tell zero. me too, by the way. Just saying. I did. Well, they were the decorated containers, but there were. He's just marks. trying to help you out. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Yeah. I'm actually glad I didn't know. Yeah. You always so, figure it out. No need to. You hear two, you're like, oh, okay, that's manageable. We ordered nine. So, you know. <laughs> now you're like, wait, six? Oh, no. But they um, real, back. real quick, shout out, Nancy. Frayley is in chat. How hey. are you, Nancy? Nancy, we're trying nice. to do like last weekend in July. Just a heads up for the next meetup. If you want to come hang out, you're obviously more than welcome. But that's what we're trying to do. So hopefully that's helpful to you. Um, Rob Sinclair said, Arby Smoke Bourbon coming out tomorrow. What is the bourbon world coming to? It is coming Arby to Smoke Arby's. Bourbon. Nice. So, you know, <laughs> you hear toasted. You don't hear smoked a whole lot, you know? Gotta... Arby's, I mean, they're on this. I mean, I think it's like... That's a cool word. Now Smoke. I just envision Ving Rhames fucking. Smoke we got cheddar. the whiskey. <laughs> On the commercial. Yep. Pizza and tacos and mac and cheese. All right, man. That sounds great. 204. I'm in for it. That sounds freaking awesome. Juju. Those underwriters are punching the air, seeing all those docs signed by. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Juju, for did. fuck's sake. Juju almost got you. No, that wasn't even close. Juju, you're going to have to come up with a different one. Um. Okay, I'm trying. I'm just trying to catch up in the old chat skis here. I can't believe I missed all these chats. I was, it was pri- it was. You just thought you're thought streaming was- to no one. There's like, wow, this live chat sucks. <laughs> no, I, I, I just thought it was, this is. I was honed in. No, this is <laughs> this, this, this is crazy. Um. So well, we can do. You guys got a couple minutes. We'll do a few more questions from patrons. Sure. Yeah. All right. Um. We got any other rise planned for the future? Rye releases. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do we, I mean, we haven't really even, we were literally coming up with 2023. Trying to, we're trying to just figure out like our uh, production schedule for our 80 proof four grain, our barrel strength. We're actually thinking about this is, I'll give you the real time glimpse. We had a meeting about it this morning, but we, we, you know, historically, because of just cash flow, we've had to do uh, four, like barrel strength, we, we usually run four batches a year. Okay. And it's not just because of rapid. It's actually just to, for us to manage cash flow sure. a little bit easier than doing like a big run and getting it out and sitting on inventory. It's just better for us to manage the money just by doing four runs every, once a quarter. Um, but I think this year we're going to, we may, I mean, we're still figuring out, but we may do like just two barrel strength releases next year. Like, oh, wow. We, are we not doing the 13? I think the 13 is fine, but if you don't want to do it, it's okay. Um, but we do 14 and 15 say next year. Yeah, Danny. So we're we're figuring all that all out. But from a rye perspective, um, I do really like we we have done a few toasted ryes. Um, we did one and, and they came out really nice using some of those uh whistle pig barrels. And I I I would like to do like maybe take like a little breather on toasted bourbon and do maybe a drop, kind of like what Mictors does. I like what how they do sure. that. I think that's pretty cool. That sounds freaking incredible, dude. I just want to have that toasted 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 riser. Yeah, they're good. With cigar? Um, We've been we've been messing around with some bourbon rye blends too, but just just messing around at this. Dan will buy it. I'm I'm Dan's in. in. I I mean, we both love bourbon rye. I love bourbon rye. Now, do you do? Do you guys think you should do it with like a cast finish? 
I do either way. Like, so mm. it's interesting because before Forgate did recently, I would have said no. Yeah. And then because Forgate did a burr eye and uh it's 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 incredible. And then Forgate took that burr eye and then double finished it and, yeah. and did two different barrels. And it's one of the best whiskeys we've ever had from Forgate ever. Is that really? 19? Mm-hmm. Batch 19? Yeah. yeah I think it's because like they took a, batch 17 and then double finished it and made batch 19. Rum and yeah. sherry or something Anyways. like that. We just got in these these like the Umbrianas. We have toke eyes. <laughs> just just start dumping just shit. Yeah, you know. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, we we always but you know what I mean. Like I, I I we do have the Umbrianas. We those things took about eight months to get in, and uh, we, we we don't even know what we'll do with them. But worst case scenario, Daniel blended out. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I I tried the Starlight Umbriana and I loved it. I thought it was really good. Yeah, that's interesting. Good. Those Which barrels. Who else, are has star, who else is Umbriana? A lot of folks. We, no, we have no. two bourbon rye blends out there right now. Uh, Burr ryes are more popular than that. The the Umbriana. The I've seen like, a Good Times wild. Umbriana. I've seen a Rare Character Umbriana. Starlight. Starlight. Yeah. So I've only seen three. I think Craft basically. Mm-hmm. No one Heritage has done that. That's true. Not that I. Not that we're aware. Not I can of. think of. Yeah. But it also is like, I think that that also creates a very love or hate profile. Well, Juju said a toasted burr rice. Sign me the. F- yeah, that uh, sounds incredible. <laughs> they don't drink anything that's toasted or in a burr rye. Yeah. yeah. Um, somebody, Jeffrey Wax said, for Penelope Architect, what does structure and persistency mean on the chart on the back? What oh. do those two terms mean? That's fair. Um, persistency is like the lingering in the wood notes across the palette. And then, um, structure is kind of how the wood meets the, the bourbon. Like, okay. Like how it blends together. Like, is there a consistency across the palette with the, the way it meshes? They marry together. Yeah. Interesting. Man. You Um, know what to really ruin your day? Just smelling that after what we blended. That smells great. That's what Danny blended. I love well, that, that you guys sense. are still going to town there over there. That this makes sense. Which one is this? That is two. Yeah. This, see that? I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. We we made a worse ber- version of two. Is what happened. Do you think we were gonna make? No, no, no. This, uh, no. This is no. You say that because two is so my favorite. Gentle on the finishing yeah. aspects, and it's not overwhelming, which is which is why three is my favorite because i want that dan likes to be overwhelmed i need to be punched with it (laughs) um i just thrasher uh asked on patreon if they think that whatever time they store the barrels in new jersey does it change the mgp or ross and swear or whatever you want to call it profile enough to make it uniquely jersey bourbon like jersey specific flavor profiles because it's stored there for any period of time Uh, yes, to some extent, yeah. I mean, we've also tasted MGP that's been stored all over all the United sorts. States. Mm-hmm. And it, anywhere outside of, um, yeah, Lawrenceburg, it gets wildly different. Yeah. yeah. Climate think, plays such a big role. Lawrenceburg's like the, uh, the benchmark. That's, that's sure. like what everyone's kind of working off of. And then it just goes in all different directions and <laughs> gets a little bit different. I like I froze before because I was thinking of like <laughs> I was thinking of this one specific barrel we left next to the radiator last winter. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, just, it was like good shit. or bad? No, it was it was really good. There wasn't much left in it. Oh and, uh, yeah, you got a little warm. We we just heated the thing up. <laughs> we just had samples that were left intentionally left next to a still yes for several years so they were also they were um distilled at 103 proof so super low and left next to the still in front of a window so they could get the maximum amount of heat and proof up a lot which is wild they were they were like legitimately incredible Mm -hmm. honestly Mm -hmm. uh, i mean i mean just even at mgp though there is such a distinctive variation between one batches and then two like locations. Yeah. So it's, 
it's always like it always keeps us on our toes but you know we've tasted so many of the batches of the same mash bills that we we kind of like know what pot it it fits in at this point sure okay. and like, oh i know like you you taste it and you're like oh i know i know what kind of blend this is gonna end up in you know it's like oh, oh interesting. wow it, so like it, you're, you're knowing the outcome of it based on the flavor profile of it initially it's it's really helped like through the last three years to narrow down how to get to the end point like hmm. now i could taste a batch and be like oh okay i know you know where to start and, sure. and then sure. you start whittling away at the at so the now you guys are in a place that it's like if you were at buffalo trace you try you try something younger you're like all right at two years i can tell you this is going to be this line or whatever uh and then you try the next one you're like all right this is gonna be this line so you guys are now taking your uh source switching you're like well i know exactly which product that's going into that's yeah. so wild yeah. to me but but but, then, but then people it, hand me really worked with the same three mash bills right yeah but this we started people hand people hand me or us like uh whiskey from other places or other mash bills and it's like what do you think of this i don't fucking know <laughs> right. I, is it a 21 rye is it a 45 weeder is it 999 corn mgp yeah. i could tell you I could tell you everything there is to know about those three mash bills right sure. now. Yeah. <laughs> but that's but, kind of know, being new to the industry that helped us. That that's sure. like kept it simple in the beginning. It's interesting because that's kind of like like Jackie when she was an old forcer, she'd always say, like, I don't drink anything else. Like that, you know, like that's what she drinks, which is like cocktails or old forcer. You know what I mean? Like, but that was the thing, is she was known really well for being able to taste to your distillate and be like that's going to be a 1920 mm -hmm. right like i know where that's going to go you know what i mean but it's because like you just said you drink that so much that you become so familiarized with that specific like sean and i i feel like sean and i just drink so many different things yeah they're like if we know what's like off profile for like a russell's single barrel or something right yeah but yeah. We don't know, like, if we went to Russell's and they're like, here's 25 barrels, and then, like, if you needed to blend seven of them to match our profile, we'd not know where to start. Hell no. But they were like, we've had a million of these, and we know exactly which seven we pick. You know what I mean? So it makes sense. The familiar familiarity thing from, like, an efficiency standpoint is insane. Good news is they blend it probably, like, 70 barrels. So they're <laughs> so like, yeah, fuck it, rip it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, everybody's always asking about American single malts right now, and it's like, I know nothing about American single malts. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that that Dude, is a weird space. Is that the next thing? Because I just feel like that's not like a friendly it's thing not. for the market. It's such an aggressive fucking whiskey, generally. That, it really is. I'm trying. Yeah. I it depends on what you're getting. There are a couple American single molds that we will we put like. Yeah, heads. Yeah, there's some good ones. Just way above others. Uh mm -hmm. even the ones we put above others. Bourbon's so easy. Yeah. You can grab a bourbon that you know is going to be easy to drink or crushable or complex or whatever you want. Familiarity, yeah. I don't, I don't know that there's even enough American single malt and consistency with them for the familiarity. There's not, but that's also like what you're saying. It's like it's a new thing. It'll take time to get sure. there. It's so weird. That's, that's interesting, though, is a lot of people want there to be a new thing. Kind yeah. of almost yeah. quick, right? Right. And uh, I mean, I think, I think a lot of this stuff is like generational like sure. how it's yeah. not going to evolve as quickly as maybe like i'm ready for the next iphone you know what i mean like right so you might That's think because you're you gotta wait programmed a week. from a tech perspective or new releases yeah. from whatever it might be but i think there's a lot of people that love american single malts will it be the next big thing like i don't know maybe ask me in like 10 it could be a while it could be could be five years could be, one year, could be 15 you know for all i know Right. Yeah, I don't have a lot of faith yeah. in the TikTok generation. Jeez. They're on that next thing in you, fucking you three are so seconds. You're so old saying that. Yeah. You're 33 and yeah. you're already talking about the generation. Yeah. Thing. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Yeah. These start, kids back then. Yeah, these kids yeah. telling me these motherfuckers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I, Bro, that's what whiskey will do to you. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, real quick, uh, we do an advent calendar every year for context. And then uh, last year we shot Bo's video he actually sent us a really good bottle it was joseph magnus cigar blend we drank it we both absolutely loved it and then uh we either lost the video yes, or didn't it have was audio. corrupted is that what happened yeah oh i think 
You might have been right. It might have been no audio. Yeah. So we didn't have any because there was three videos we didn't have audio on yeah. last year. I think that was one. Two or three. So yeah. now Bo's saying you're holding the reserve advent spot for me so I can screw it. So you can we screw talked it about up it. again, right? Yep. And we absolutely will. Sean did say he would screw it up again. Yeah, I'd on say, purpose, though. I did not say that. Uh, Juju said, Tosa Burr, I signed me the fuck up, 100%, without a doubt. Yeah, Mike, I was just... I had that on our thing today. Dude. Yeah. Or rise all day. Oh, man. That sounds incredible. Uh, we were yeah, talking man. like we were talking about Blue Rye, and then and then Mike's like, "Let's toast it," and I'm like, ah. <laughs> "It's like, uh, it's like, yeah, it's no, such another, yeah, it's such another layer of." Nah, oh. no, but you know, what I mean, you gotta you gotta keep the the energy going. Just gotta oh, throw yeah. it out there. If get you get a nice cigar blend going. I don't, I going. don't think you need to do it. I mean, a lot. Remember the Dallas Bourbon Club blend that we did? That yeah. thing was phenomenal. That, that was a phenomenal was Blue Rye. Um, kind of the 33 year old YouTuber. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, right. But and you're he, acting like an 85 year old grumpy man. Yeah, I can forecast on things. What do you want from me? You no, are gonna, not, you are going to be a great grumpy old man, though. He oh, is. Man, I'm already there. He's an old soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can just see it. I'm just dude, already there, dude. He sits at home and watches Jeopardy at night. Like yeah. he's doesn't? already literally a 65 year old man. 80s tomorrow, maybe next yeah. week. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, it's me, how me and my wife measure ourselves. Did I beat you on Jeopardy today? Holy shit. Yes or no? You're both so old and <laughs> yep. insane, dude. Do you it go back so... to back and do you rip Wheel of Fortune right after it? Oh, ass, no. She kicks my ass in Wheel of Fortune. I don't know words, <laughs> unfortunately. She does. She knows how the alphabet works. I don't get it. <laughs> uh, double header. Yeah, so it doesn't really work out for me. We just do Jeopardy, and it was we could tank the whole fucking episode. If we get Final Jeopardy right, might as well have had a million dollars that day. <laughs> Did we only have a hundred dollars to bet? Yeah, but I got it right. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> so Nancy said American single malt depends a lot upon cooperage. Um, and then yeast fermentation. I mean, the thing is, is I'm sure that like I'm not discounting all of it because like you said, there are some that we do like. Yes. The problem is is it does it feels like a more abrasive market to get into from the a fewer and far between you know, the ones that we do like. Yeah, for that reason, there are significantly more really bad to mediocre ones than there are true because a lot of really? those bad to mediocre smack you so hard, you're like, I think I'm good on well, the entire scape. And a lot of the ones that seem to be released right now are like all two years old. So, like, we like, um, two years old, 126 proof, yeah, leather, and dark as night, fucking, and just ugh. yeah, black leather. But the we liked, um, Westward a lot, yes, that one's great. Is it Westward or Westland? I don't know, it's not a lot of their stuff, it's really good. Dude, it, it was fantastic. It was really great. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was oh, our like one of our favorite American single malts we've had, and it was so far above a lot of the other ones we've had. Yeah. But even that one isn't something like we reach for almost ever, and we like that one a lot. You know what I mean? Do you think we reach for anything consistently right now? I've been drink. Yeah, I've been drinking. I mean, so this is almost half gone. There's some blue runs in there. I've been drinking a lot. Proximity. So you go by with what's right next to you. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's yeah. a lazy factor. I could put fucking American <laughs> single malt next to you and I bet you'd be drinking them. Come to find out. Yeah. I like that. I don't I think like so. That's what I so Yeah, we are I identical. Have, I'm a yeah. I'm a proximity. Like yeah. Yeah. My proximity minds. I'm like what's everything around? I have a couple of bottles in my office and that's exactly what it is. I realized it the other day. I was like, man, I've been drinking the bottles right fucking next to me. That makes sense. Well, and the other problem is is in the office, all of our store picks are all of the open ones are on the shelves next to my desk. So more often than not, I just drink our store picks. Yeah, because you don't have to get up. Well, and it's like you I don't I don't do feel bad about drinking our store picks because it's like, no, we went and picked them, we like them, and they, they're right here. Yeah, you know, like mm -hmm. we don't I get it, can't replace them, never to be done again. <laughs> no, but that's okay. One of ones. That's all right though. Yeah. Cause like root beer float killed it. We did another one this year. That you asked earlier about the picks. Um, the Wilderness Trail bourbons that we did. Oh yeah, I we pick like these weird, like and kind of intentionally now. The stuff they put in their pick program is wildly different from their yeah. shelf offerings. We pick like these weird off-profile yeah. wilderness, and they're like my favorite. I, I love them. They taste like toasted barrels, but they're not. It's uh, weird. yeah, there's like so much beer. like vanilla so and that like spicy uh, sarsaparilla. Yeah, whatever the shit, whatever that is. Uh, Mass says <laughs> focusing on American single malt in America is like McDonald's focusing on green smoothies. <laughs> it feels that way. Get your shamrock shake. That's, that's really that's awesome. Yeah, it does fun. feel that way though, if I'm being honest. That's Everybody's talking about that moving in that direction, chat. but it's it's tough. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's just it feels so distant from bourbon. You know, like it just it feels like a whole different. Yeah, it feels like almost like Texas whiskey. Like feels like a different category. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a whole different thing. But uh, Mackenzie Rowland with a freaking 50. ridiculous. Thank you very much. Chat, man. Thank you off. so much, buddy. Been watching y'all for two years. Just want to contribute to Virtue Spirits. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate, appreciate that. It, Thank you so much. You think he knows Steve Rowland? Yeah, you guys related? This, the two of the Rowlands? They got it. Row the lands. They, they are here together. Nancy said, agreed, many are bad and mediocre. I think that bourbon rye fans and single malt fans are looking for very different things aromatically. I believe that. Oh, yeah. I believe that. The other thing is, is I just like scotch more than I like American single malt. So if I'm going to go single malt, yeah. I'm just going to go to scotch. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until I have something that blows me away, but I, you know. Well, Scotland's been doing it for a long fucking time. And out. America was like, we do bourbon. And they're like, you know what? Let's do single. And then we're like, not great at it. So <laughs> yeah, it will be interesting to see, though, like if it gets where it goes more popular, honestly. But they could just go to Scotland and be like, hey, how the hell do you guys do this? I know, but you <laughs> don't want it to be the same. No, I, it would not even be close to the same. You think you're going to get that nice briny characteristic? Yeah, I was just going to say, it'd be really interesting to see an American single malt that the distillery was on the shore. The, the coast Washington somewhere. coast? Yeah, the coast somewhere, yeah. Is it, isn't Westland uh, in Washington? Oregon. I, is, uh, uh, I thought it was on Oregon or Washington. Yeah, Oregon. Oregon. yeah. But it, okay. it'd be really interesting to like have one be on a coastline yeah. and see yeah. differences with them both being single malts or whatever. But Tommy said single malts are terrible. All right. Well, <laughs> crash palette. Well, Tommy, the feedback <laughs> yeah, really, really summed that one up, and uh, this is why we don't do fucking panels. So, um, <laughs> that was really fucking. He's got a picture of this now. You guys are okay, sitting um, in some fancy chairs, huh? What did you say? You guys are sitting in some fancy chairs. No, fancy dude. Chairs. <laughs> we bought these chairs like three years ago from Wayfair, and these things have held up like I fucking. There, like I, I know there's a story there somewhere. <laughs> um, oh, mine's these, about broken. Yeah, these have lived through hell. They're on their last legs, but they've really done it, dude. For the for how much we we've pay tightened from, them up. Yeah, these things have been fucking incredible. <laughs> Are they stools or chairs? They're like bar stools. Yeah, so they're probably three and a half oh, foot they tall. Swivel. Oh, yeah. They swivel. Oh, they look comfortable actually. They look great. So, that was the thing is Sean and I had chairs and we were never fucking comfy. Yeah. We sit here for two to three hours and it was like, why don't we, we just like buy nicer chairs? We had a way lower table with yeah. those like barrel chairs that were like They're decent at best. Yeah. Too, way too big. And uh, then we switched to the higher table. We're like, all right, we tried to do like these different stools that Dan broke in two weeks, I think. <laughs> You yeah. broke the, the like the Dude, footrest off of them. I blew these stools out in like a month, and they were like two hundred bucks. It was like that was not worth it. Uh, that was no. insane. Like <laughs> it was bad. The foot part was like attached with just like tacked on well. Like it was, it was just they were fucking awful. Jesus, giving me shit. I said three two, and a half foot. Two years, pretty. That's a good hold up time. Very these good. Were great. Yeah. I don't even. I don't. I remember buying them from Wayfair. They didn't come with a kid. Like they weren't that I expensive. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Is E your favorite? E. I don't know. I'm about to give it a whirl. Well, Wait, you gotta go back. Well, here's Wait, the thing. A, a was your first favorite. Thing. So you gotta go back to back. We all okay, let's figure out this barrel strength thing. What are we doing here? <laughs> we, we here's the thing. We need to we need to know your answer because I'm assuming Danny has an answer already. Danny's answer is C. The one I did, I, I had I, I had have, A and C. I usually have two out. answers because Mike's the more passionate one. So like I'll I'll like have two rights and then he'll be like fall in love with one of them. So come to find out you're Mike and I'm Danny. <laughs> Wait, did you just figure that out? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I figured this out for me and my phone call. Yeah. Because we got the phone. He's like, dude, this fucking guy. I just got <laughs> off the fucking Peloton. I'm like, that's fucking crazy. And I'm like, wow, we're the same fucking dude, he said, I just broke a fucking record on the Peloton. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. You know, I'm not like a I'm not like a fitness guy, but like a fitness freak, but like I do the 15 minute uh, rides. Dude. I, but no, 100%. Mike also has his uh, profile said is like a 70 year old man. He's like, I'm crushing my debate. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's in the master class, like the old veteran masters. <laughs> oh, shit. oh, that's so funny. No, every, but just doing anything helps, right? Even if yeah, there's times when I do, I'll rip those like 10 minute rides and mm -hmm. um, you just try to break the record and it feels good. 
You feel better <laughs> after. Hundred percent for a week. Like you're yeah. gasping for like an hour. You're like, what is it? <gasps> oh yeah. You feel better about doing My wife and I'm so dramatic. I'm like, after a ten minute ride, I'm like. <sighs> And you're like, this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> Breathing heavily. <laughs> you know what's incredible? Like, and you're like, literally, is that what you, you do? What's incredible is your wife had a baby and you do like a 10 minute Peloton ride. You're like, life Woo! literally couldn't get harder right now. You know what I mean? Like, it's just incredible. Yeah, I mean, Danny, you try to get your wife to hold out till the next day. That's true. The 13th. That's true. Have you ever tried to get Mike to stay on a Peloton for four hours? Because I, you know what I mean? Like, have I happen. ever get, tried to get Mike to sit anywhere for more than ten minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Danny, what were you? What, what, what were these two? Are you the ones you liked? Yes. All right, that's what I thought. Yeah, I I really like the first one. Hey, I like oh, this yeah. one. What, yeah. what is that? Give everyone what, what, what is what's that? Yes, yes, hundred percent. Yeah, this one's good. See, I told you, Danny. Okay, okay, now when you see batch either thirteen Trust or fourteen, me. one of the two, depending on Danny's decision here. It will either be a sample A or C. Trust yeah. the system. What do you, what what is A? Give us give us give us a quick run on this one. Is it hot? Because you're you're bottling this next week. Yeah. Uh yeah, A is uh it's That's it's more it's like a higher wheat and rye blend than we normally do. Highly recommend but higher wheat. The nose on it just is wild. Is what caught me, and then and awesome. then everything after that stands up to the nose. I got a you know, no jalapeno, <laughs> which is good. No, it's we're a gonna send you guys a bottle of jalapeno. I was nervous. Please about do. The- oh yeah, we'll put it on the shelf. We'll share it with people. Oh yeah, 100%. I was nervous about the spice at the end. That's the only thing. But no, I, I think I, people, I like I think it, people yeah, would no, like it. Really good. And then C was C was like just. Not flat like in a bad way, but just like like you just plow right through it kind of thing, you know? It was just very even uh great across the board, but just like you know, I don't know how to explain it. Crushable. <laughs> yeah. Crushable. Sometimes you need that. Sometimes I, I you just like need crushable. that out of a bottle of whiskey that you're like, fucking Christ, I am ready to open this and we're gonna sit down with a couple people, we're gonna move through about half this bottle tonight and feel great about it. But then yes. here's the thing too, like so so yes, we Sean, narrowed it absolutely. down to A and C and then just dropped the dropped water into both of them and then dropped the cube into both of them. And A stood up better mm-hmm. than C. C kind of fell. I, I haven't done that yet, but I'm assuming that's what would happen. But I did like this as a crushable ripper. This without ice or Easy. water, I can oh, rip yeah. this. Good. I'm glad. Sorry I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, hey, man, if you were there two hours ago, you'd know my answer. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Um, oh, that's real funny. quick, Nancy is heading out for dinner. Not, thanks for hanging out, Nancy. We appreciate it. I hope you're having a great thanks, time. Nancy. Uh, yeah, second, Alec Rubin from Alec Bradley Cigars, who is tonight's live stream sponsor, which should not influence your uh, answer to this question. Can I do a Penelope pick? They said no, Alec. That was crazy. Oh, yeah. so- <laughs> I am talking to Alec Bradley, uh, Connecticut Nano tonight. Fan-fucking-tastic. No, so- we met at, at Whiskey Weekend. Heck yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alec was plastered, too. Holy oh, shit. That's when he stole one of the rare characters. Okay. Who, who we, were doing, we were all hanging out at your cigar after party. Yeah. yeah. So we were, do- we were supposed to do a rare character pick that with Alec there. And not obviously that night because it was like late and everybody's smoking cigars and drinking whiskey, or whatever. Alec grabs one of our samples, our barrel samples, opens it and just starts chugging it. And then took it with him. And it was like a hundred mil. So it's not like a chuggable amount of whiskey. Oh, that was that was a two hundred miller. Tops two hundred. Yeah, it was mil. definitely two hundred miller. Sounds good. Either way, not a chuggable amount of whiskey. No we didn't pick that one. It is. <laughs> mostly we, because Alec stole that mostly one. Mostly because nobody else drank, drank it, it and then filled it up with another bottle and then took it out. Fucking now. Alec. <laughs> Love that guy. So earlier he said he wasn't invited to pours in the park either. Which is true because he was having child. No, his wife is having, That's having child. Well, in theory, he was there to support his wife having a child. In theory, so we no, don't know that. I did not invite him. Yeah. You're right. Because I was like, I knew he was having a kid for eight months. And I'm like, I'm not even Most telling people you. know for roughly that time too. Well, I mean, I wasn't part of the birth thing. So, you know, that was a long time. Thank God. Um, Not a doctor. ADHD whiskey. My three-year YouTube anniversary tomorrow. I can't thank you guys enough for everything you've done for me over the past few years. To celebrate, 
tomorrow's video, I'm announcing something that's never been done on whiskey tube. I'm both excited right. and nervous. Wait, that's amazing. Does that mean in tomorrow's video, he's announcing something? Yeah. You think that, that would be what it means. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is? I said, I'm excited and nervous. I'm excited too. He Matt, announced congrats, that Grease buddy. actually did his fucking job yeah, right. and blended old charter. That's relax on Grease from the podcast doing things that he's supposed to do. <laughs> um, so, hey, Matt, congrats, buddy. You yeah. deserve all of it. Congrats, yeah. 100%. That's it mostly you. You deserve the best. 99% you. Also, I love you. Um, <laughs> so, uh, there was another question on Patreon, and Tommy had texted me these, so I told him to put them here and we'd ask when you guys released Architect Batch 1, did you guys plan on releasing the following two and three so quickly? You said Batch 1 to 3 is roughly seven months. So was it like intended off one to like continuously release them basically? I mean, I think this is what we struggle with a lot uh, is uh, we didn't expect that. I mean, it did well in the beginning and it went out pretty quickly. And then we didn't have a bottling run or production run scheduled and you just start getting requests for it. And we were, and it was a really small run. So we generally do like a first okay. batch or build like it was, they're small because you're just trying to, you know, if, you know, we I came out great, but if it's not like something really goes at like a stray with it, it's, you know, a huge issue and you're, we're not going to put it out there. So sure. the, the first wave is usually pretty small. Um, and I don't know, Danny, we, we, well, we basically, turned it around the second one around within two months, three, not nah. because the, the staves extract within f about five, six weeks. So okay. it's a quick extraction. Um, but it's about that amount. Yeah. So I think it's just about mm -hmm. like how quickly you need to do it. Sure. Damn. So how many barrels do you guys have going at one time with staves in it? A lot of it's tanks and the builds, remember, because yeah. the builds are. Oh, tanks. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I forgot you guys batted it first. Because in my mind, I was like, holy shit, that's insane to taste through uh, if it's a five-week maturation. So five-week maturation in a tank is insane. But but the big thing for next year is like, because it's hard as you're like, you're like adding markets and they want this and you're like trying to just make sense of all of this stuff. I think that's why we just want to like, we got a lot of products. We got a lot of like expressions. It's like, why don't we just do two drops of barrel strength? Okay, like maybe do just two batches of it, one in the spring or one in the February, one in August, right? Depending on the schedule, it's like maybe do two releases of Architect next year and sure. you can kind of sprinkle them on the calendar. Yeah. Um, the problem is we've never done this shit before. Yeah. Like <laughs> we're literally making this shit up as we go. Yeah. Like there's times where I'm like, has anyone worked at Jim Beam for 30 years? <laughs> Anyone at our company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has anyone at our company ever <laughs> fucking done this before? <laughs> and the yeah, they did. Is, like a hundred years you know, ago. So that's that's the thing. I think you're, you know, as you some of the as you're growing, you're like, like how like how do you manage that? Like, and that that's it's that's fun. Cool. I, I, I that's what I think it's cool. But you know, like you kind of hear from. I mean, we listen to feedback really well. Like, just just that's the best way to do it. If you think that's a better strategy, but. Just trying to figure it out as we go. Uh, Alex said, can't wait for the Penelope pick. My pops is going to be pumped. <laughs> did they? Did yeah, you guys man, agree? Too. No, I think he meant ours, right? Oh, ours? <clears throat> wait, is Al Alec is implying, yeah. I believe, that there was, was yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the exactly what he hey, Alec. They, dude, they said, no, I don't know what to tell you, man. They told uh, yeah, me, they, they said before the stream, swing it. if Alec they said two asks a year. for a barrel pick, it's a fucking hard no. That's what they said before the stream. I don't know, man. I have in a text. <laughs> Damn, will you text me real quick? <laughs> um, Michelle, Women of Whiskey's Happy Tuesday, friends. What a great stream. Thank you so much. Hey, for the thanks, chat. Michelle. I hope you're doing well. Thank you. Thanks. If you guys are still in chat and haven't checked them out, go ahead and on over. Um, Tommy said thanks for the answer. Tommy's in chat, by the way. So that was his question. Oh, man, I forgot. It's so much easier when he's two hours behind. Tommy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, oh, this is probably the last one. The somebody was mentioning, like, are you guys? Is there a plan, or is the goal, or just no interest in like age stating a product? Basically, you guys age stated the light whiskey, didn't you? Yeah, but we got. Like, that like, was just like those things stuff. fell on our lap. Yeah. So is the is the intention to like 
only age state limiteds when you like when it's like the you know when it's like the light whiskey or something or eventually age state some things and not others or this is i mean light whiskey is now really hard to get now we we had uh we had been offered light whiskey probably back in like early 2020 mm. and that wasn't like super the ones we got were just like we actually have a lot of light whiskey we have a lot of nine and ten year light whiskey but it's like something about when it turns over a little bit gets yeah. into that double digit it starts getting yeah. getting real funky so they got they got a couple years they got a little ways to go, but I think it you know we're like the 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 ten year experimental weeded whiskeys from MGP those fell in our lap. Sure. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think if we we come across something, I think if we love it, uh, heck yeah, we'll put it out. If if it if we really like it, we'll definitely put it out. The problem is right now the prices are crazy. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Oh, we get, well, we can get these barrels. They're like twelve years old. That's all They're across like whiskey. Forty-seven million dollars a barrel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, and what? listen, as long yeah. as you can sell them for eight hundred dollars a bottle, oh, you yeah, guys will make good. money yeah. on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like after distributor markup and retailer and shipping and glass, you know. <laughs> and it's like, it is like it's so crazy. I think it's something that is. Um, from a consumer standpoint, not obviously known very well, is that Total like cost. everybody just sees whiskey on a shelf, like has gone up, right? Because yeah. it has for the most part. And then like what nobody saw was like glass went up and labels went up and Corks you know, went freaking, up. you know, the <laughs> barrel of whiskey went up. quadrupled in price. And yeah. like that, and then it, they be, also became harder to find after quadrupling in price. And it was like, so many things have happened, it, it seems like. And we've only been it's even talking one domino, to brokers yeah. for a year and a half, right? And it was like, so we don't even know, obviously, the full brunt of it. We don't even have a fucking bottle on a shelf to deal with it, right? And it's like, but from a consumer standpoint, if Sean and I would have never started down the path that we're headed, we never yeah. would have known that either. We've just been like, why the fuck is everything mm -hmm. so expensive now, you know? And it's like, well, dude, barrels went from fucking $1,000 to $4,000, yeah. literally. Like... Remember that in the beginning? I remember in the beginning, Danny, I'd be, I'd be like, okay, our first run cost us this. Right. But it was a little bit of a smaller run. And then we go to the second run. And I'm like, oh, it's a little bit bigger. And I'm, my thought was like, your costs go down as your volume goes up. And this is the only industry. Well, it's the complete opposite. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, I remember Danny, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? This industry is whack. Like, I'm like, bro, like we are bottling a lot more. But her costs have skyrocketed. Yeah. Well, like the, the whiskey is literally half the price of your bottle. Yeah. The, you know, the liquid's half the cost. Right. Consider yeah, and then you when you factor in like the bottling labor, the glass, the label, the transportation, the warehousing, all that other crap. You, you know, get nickel and dime. So when your whiskey moves in, even the PVC in price, person, that's the even biggest the driver the of what your person is like a pain in the ass. Cog of the bottle is going to be like, what do you mean? You're going to raise it a cent on the PVC plastic <laughs> that goes on top of it? Come mm -hmm. on, man. Can you just go down a cent so I get one win out of this whole thing? <laughs> right. <laughs> They're like, no, we need that profit yeah. margin. Thanks. We actually did pick up a cent on our capsules this year. <laughs> oh, wait, say that again. That's the only thing that costs us less is our capsules. All right. Cool. <laughs> we're gonna take that win put it yeah. in the win column we got one i don't even need to know how by how much i just need to know that we are yeah, paying successfully a winning. little bit less yeah, yeah. We, we did it <laughs> we did it yeah it's it's crazy it's a it's a racket but it's uh i think if you don't you don't stretch yourself too thin and you can you kind of hunker in i mean it's it's totally yeah. manageable mm -hmm. yeah no oh, man. Well, we appreciate the hell out of you guys taking time out of your 100%. days and nights. And I know awesome. you guys are busy and we appreciate you guys letting us do this because I love I like the architect stuff so much. So when we were nice. talking on the phone, you're like, dude, we could do an architect thing. And like, that'd be cool, super cool. Cause obviously we haven't done one and I like yeah. a huge fan of them. And but uh yeah, no, I think the the it'd be super cool. I it sounds like basically kind of what we talked about a little bit earlier, but ending on doing like blends of the 777 and the 2210 together. And then, you know, if Danny wants to send over a few different, you know, ratios, ratios or whatever. Yeah. And Real ratios whatever, other than our like. Eh. Kind of half and half. Yeah. And then we My notes are there. a little bit cleaner than Danny's. Just, yeah. you know, sli yeah, slightly less. 777 uh, plus 2210. Yeah. 
And, and then, listen, we, then we get creative with whatever. Sean, Sean's like, we don't have to attack people out their notes and stuff. You know? Yeah, Sean, yeah. Sean yeah. looks like he lives in a hospital somewhere when you read his notes. And that's fine. <laughs> no, but thank you guys so much. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we do appreciate you guys. it. You know, thank we you love you guys. Help. Thank you guys very much for yeah. having us on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank really you guys for the help with everything. The advice and mentorship stuff on virtue and all of that. We appreciate the hell out of it. So. Cheers, guys. We're going to thank, thank you guys. everybody for Appreciate being in chat tonight and hanging yeah. out. Thanks for all the super chats and the, the support and love. And see you guys a different day at a different time. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. See you. Man, that's a good blend. I'm glad I came up with it.